the Lord that we are here this morning. Um, and um, as we are going to now start with our Sabbath school, we are going to bow down and um, with uh, silent prayer. Shall we bow down? Amen. So welcome to our Sabbath school this morning. And um, for those that don't know me, my name is Lennon Ndebele. And I will be presenting you to you shortly, well, a short presentation this morning as we start um, with um, our service. And as we know that today we are talking about music, everything music. Today we will sing, it's music. We will talk music, we will eat music, we will hear music. Everything is about music. But um, I hope and trust that your hearts will be soothed today because of music. And in any case, in heaven we won't be preaching. We will not be preaching in heaven, but we will be singing and worshipping the Lord all throughout. So, please enjoy this day with me. Get yourself in, in that, 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 that space that I am going to praise the Lord today. I'm going to enjoy myself and I'm going to give it my all because he gave it all. Amen. So, we can't hold back. Let's not hold back. If you feel like standing up and praising the Lord and raising your hands, it's up to you. Praise the Lord. Today, for this part of the morning, I'm going to talk about the songs in heaven. And it is based on um, the book Revelation. Um, Revelations, um, we find it is actually will be from a verse, chapter 5, verse 8 to 14. We might not read it, but I'm just giving you a base where my talk is going to be about this morning. So songs in heaven. Who actually can, we are interacting here, I'm not going like, to do that uh, uh, um, presentation, a formal one, but we are all going to interact. We're talking about songs in heaven. Who can tell me what comes to mind when you talk about songs in heaven? Based on the book that we've, I've just given to you. Let's talk. Songs in heaven. Okay, you can just talk if you, if you can't raise your hand. Let's talk. Songs in heaven. Yes, my sister. Holy, holy, holy. Oh, yeah. Holy, holy, holy. And this actually gives me, takes me to the first point of my, um, uh, what I'm going to present to you. Song of the creatures and the elders. They fell down before the lamb. And what were they doing when they fell down before the lamb? as my sister has given, holy, holy art thou. The four living creatures and the 24 elders fell down and worshipped the Lord. He was worthy to die for sins of the world, worthy to open the scroll and worthy to be worshipped. The lamb is about to receive the same accolade as the father. We hear the sound, worthy thou art, worthy art thou. And in that praise and worship, we see or we hear. Obviously, there is something to see there and there's something to hear. We see a harp and we hear the sound of the harp with the golden bowls. And we all know from the study of our sanctuary that... Um, the power of incense explained in the Bible. What does it do? It, what does it represent? Our prayers, prayers of the sinners, of the sins. It presents, that's, that's, the, that's the, the, the power. And the harps thereof represent the song of God's, on, God's only um, holy ones. So here we hear the harp harping. Yeah, they say the harp harps. <laughs> the harp is happening. And the people are singing praises. 
for the, you know, the gift that we've been given to God. As we are talking today, we're saying music is the gift of God to man. It is a gift that we've been given. What do you do when you are given a gift? What do you do with a gift? You treasure it. You make sure that you protect it. You make sure that you love it. You make sure that if it's something that is tangible, you can hold, you make sure that you clean it, it's, it's looking good, and it's, it's, it's at a safe place, and you always look at it and admire and say, I received this from so-and-so, and then it connects us with our fellow men and we worship and fellowship together. We see again in the same chapter where it's talking about a new song. Who knows about this new song? What have you heard about this new song? What does it say? What is the new song? Let's talk. Our revelation is giving us that there is a new song. So we sing songs here, the old songs, but there's a new song. Which one is that? One from Moses and the Lamb. Moses and the Lamb. So that song, we don't know it now. And we will not know it until then. So make sure that you are there to sing that song. To experience that kind, that atmosphere. This is a new song. This is a new song an anthem not for, the, for one nation, but for all the earth, for every tribe and tongue and people and nation. This is the new song. We see here again in the same book, Revelation chapter 5, um, that the Lord reigneth. The Lord reigns, and when he reigns as creatures here, what do we do? What do we do when we see the Lord reigning? We give glory, we give praises, we worship him, we fall down. Now, um, at this moment, we were supposed to have a special item from the group Harmonium, but one member is not yet here. However, I'm going to do something myself just before they come in here. I've got my brother here, Prince. Brother Prince is going to help me with a song in the SDA hymnal, 5 to 6. I'm going to sing the song. You're going to help me with the God sent his son. God sent his son. Yeah, prepare your instrument. And while um, we do that, then I'll give you the second segment of what is the song or the songs of heaven as given in one, two, testing one, two, it's on, but I can't hear myself, I can hear myself now, I can hear myself, um, so my, my brother, the camera would want to capture you, so God, God sent his son. God sent his son. They call him Jesus. He came to him. You don't know it. It's fine. Yes. Can you push it along? <laughs> God, God sent his son. God sent his son, they call him Jesus, he came to love, he'll and forgive, he lived and died to buy my pardon and empty grave is there to prove my Savior lives because he lives I can 
and face tomorrow because he lives all fear is gone because I know I know he holds the future and life is worth a living just because he lives. How sweet to hold a newborn baby and feel the pride and joy he gives, but greater still a commercial this child can face some certain Just because he lives. Because he lives, I can face tomorrow. It is easy to face tomorrow because you know the Lord lives and the Lord is with me. So we talked about the songs in heaven and we looked at the song of the creatures and the elders. Now we are going to talk about the song of the angels. Who knows the song of the angels? The song of the angels. Let's talk. The song of the angels. You can just, if you're not sure, there's no wrong answer here. We can correct each other. Yes. All right. The song of the angels. Anyway, that one, um, people, oh yeah, you're still thinking. So, yes. talks about the lamb that was slain. The angels of heaven in their millions now join the elders and the living creatures in song. What did we say? The angels of heaven in their millions. In their millions. I can imagine, just imagine hearing a million voices. A million, over a million voices with the hap hopping with the saved, redeemed singing, giving praises to the Lord and the elders and the living creatures bowing holy, holy, holy. What a beautiful scene it will be in heaven. I wish you'll be there. I don't know because I'm going there. Power, honor, and glory. The terms of this song attribute to the same glory and the honor and power to the Lamb as was attributed to God the Father. This is in Revelation chapter 4, verse 11. And then, again, another thing that I want to leave with you is that there is a song of the universe. What is the song of the universe? What are we talking about here? All creatures of the earth, sky, sea, Join in the song, and it becomes a song of the whole universe. If you didn't know that the sea can sing, you now, today you know that the sea can sing. 
every created creature, everything would actually sing praises to the Lord. He can make the stones, the rocks talk. Why can't they sing? They can sing if he can make them. So every creature in heaven and on earth will actually give praises to the song. So this is the song of the universe and the song of the Lamb. Again, we note that the same praises and honor is given to whom who sits on the throne. To whom who sits on the throne. Let's go. We don't know the song. Uh, I'm disappointed. But anyway, nonetheless, I mean, I'm, I'm like excited. I mean, when you talk about this, I'm very, I'm very excited. In closing, we worshipped. The, the elders worshipped and fell down and worshipped. And the last thing that we'll say when we when we talk about this, is just to say, amen. amen. Let it be. It is true and true indeed. Amen. amen. Thank you. I greet you all in Jesus' name. Amen. amen. Today, I will be reading the mission story, and it's titled, Teen with a Mission. Nathan was six years old when his family returned home to India after serving as missionaries in Lebanon, he was a small boy and didn't have any interest in missionaries or mission work. But things changed when Nathan was 12. He became fascinated by the children's mission stories that he heard Sabbath after Sabbath in church. Soon he began to read old copies of the children's mission quarterly and sometimes even the youth and adult mission quarterly. As he read the stories, he longed to do something for God. He thought, if God can use children the same age as me and even younger, why can't he use me as a mission? A year passed, two years passed, three years passed, Nathan was 15 and he still felt like he hadn't done anything for God in mission. Then, COVID then the COVID-19 pandemic shut down India for months. Nathan's father was a pastor and at the request of parents organized an online Bible study group for teens stuck at home during the lockdown. The online group quickly grew to 15 teens and a number of the little children under 10 also joined in. Then Nathan heard that his father then Nathan heard his father tell his mother, "The smaller ones aren't fitting in. The group has two distinct levels of learning." As Nathan lay in bed that night, he felt impressed to to start a Bible group for the younger children. At breakfast, he shared his thoughts with his parents. They welcomed the, the idea and encouraged him to start right away. Nathan excitedly looked through the home library for material. He decided that each meeting he would read a Bible story from Arthur Maxwell's The Bible Story and lead a short Bible study from the Linda Kors God Loves Me 28 Ways. God blessed the efforts. Soon children were joining the Bible group from around the neighborhood and even even other parts of India. Up to 12 children joined each weekly meeting. Nathan enjoyed reading the Bible group. He felt like God was finally using him for a mission, but he longed to do something more. As COVID-19 restrictions were being lifted about a year later, he heard a sermon about, about a terminally ill girl who prayed for friends, neighbors, and even missionaries in faraway lands. The preacher said that the little girl prayed only three months before she died, but her prayers made a big difference in many lives. Nathan thought, I, sh I also should pray. I can pray for my classmates, friends, and the teens in my neighborhood. Classes were resuming at the Seventh-day Adventist when Nathan studied, and many of his classmates belonged to non-Christian religions. Nathan wondered who to pray for. He decided to pray for those who seemed to be the most open to Christianity. They seemed to be more fertile soil. Nathan noticed that one boy, Aaron, enjoyed singing at morning worship and listened attentively to worship talks. He began praying for Aaron. One day he said to Aaron, I'm happy that you are interested in Christian things. Aaron smiled broadly. I love singing these songs, he said. Long ago, I accepted Jesus as one of my gods. Nathan wanted to know more. Why did your parents choose this Christian school for you, he asked. We live on a farm out the country, he said. The only school bus that comes close to our house is the Adventist school bus. The conversation started a special friendship between Nathan and Aaron. 
Whenever possible, Nathan told him about his love for Jesus. He prayed that those seeds would bear fruit. While Nathan spoke about Jesus with Aaron, another boy named Jay was enthusiastically telling classmates about the power and goodness of the gods that he worshipped. Jay was zealous for his family's faith and he wore ritual markings on his forehead every day. Jay even spoke to Nathan about his gods. Nathan decided not to pray for Jay. Then one day, Nathan play, played the keyboard at worship, and Jay was impressed with his skill. He praised Nathan and asked if he would play a song from his own religion on the keyboard. Politely, Nathan said, I'm sorry, I only play Christian music. Jay didn't say anything more to Nathan for several months. Nathan kept praying for his other classmates and rejoiced as he saw God touching their hearts. Then one day, Jay came over to Nathan and abruptly said, Teach me the Lord's Prayer. Nathan couldn't believe his ears. Jay hadn't seemed like he, like fertile soil worth praying for, for. But here he was asking to learn the Lord's Prayer. Nathan bega began sharing his love for Jesus with Jay. As time passed, he noticed that Jay stopped talking about his gods. Sometimes he even came to school without the markings on his forehead. Our Lord has proved, has moved Jay from being an opposer to a searcher of truth, Nathan said. I believe that it won't be long before Jay finds the truth and surely the truth will set him free. Nathan is confident that God is using him for mission and he is praying to even do more. Thank you for, for your Sabbath school mission offering today that will help spread the gospel in India and Nepal. Seven of the ten of the 10, 13 Sabbath projects involve Adventist schools like the one Nathan studies. Thank you for your generous offering. Amen. Amen. Thank you, my sister, for the uh, mission report. And um, without further ado, um, I'm going to ask the superintendent to come forward. And as the superintendent comes forward, who knows um, which division or where the mission is coming from. Because what happens is um, every time, every quarter, um, the conference chooses a certain portion of where the mission comes from. It's either in the Eastern or the Central Africa or the European. Or which division are we in with this mission? It's your homework. Go and find out and read about what happens in what we are doing as Adventists with the, uh, spreading the mission of the Lord. As the superintendent comes in here, when you ask for a song, I'm going to ask the group Harmonium, to, as they do their sound check, to give us an item when she asks for a song. Thank you. I greet the church once more in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. amen. Happy Sabbath to you all. Amen. Oh, the amen. Amen. I've, I've been emphasizing on this one. Amen means let it be. So when you say amen, which means you don't know where you are. You don't even know the God that you save. Amen. I greet uh, Sabbath school members in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 That's, that, that, now that one means you know where you are. Amen. amen. Okay, without wasting much of our time, do we have visitors among us? If we've got visitors, may you stand please? We normally have something small to give you, but we promise that next week we'll have something to give you, okay? I think we ran out of... It seems like there's something. Amen. Amen. Okay, do we have people who had their birthdays? Before we do that, I think let's welcome our visitors. I'll call the, the, the group later, but uh, may we have this song, Uncle Lennon, uh, Smile Everybody, just to greet our visitors, please to welcome our special visitors. And please, greet the visitors. The people who are next to them, shake their hands to tell them you are welcome at Kempton Park Central. Amen. Smile, everybody smile. Everybody smile. Everybody smile. Smile. Everybody smile, everybody smile. You got to greet somebody. 
in Jesus name tell them that you love them in Jesus name everybody smile Jesus loves you everybody smile Jesus loves you you got to greet somebody in Jesus name tell them that you love them in Jesus name everybody smile Jesus loves you everybody smile Jesus loves you amen you are most welcome our visitors and please come again it is always too important to receive our visitors you know a long time ago when you've got visitors in the house, that will be the day that you do things that you've never done because your mother and your father will never do anything to you. Amen. So we are happy to see you. <laughs> okay. Uh, the next session that we're getting into, do we have people who had their birthdays last week, this week? Do we have people who had their birthdays or within this month? Please, may you stand. Sabbath School Department has always something very special for you. Amen. We've got one here. Oh, at the back also. Happy birthday to you all. Sabbath School is um, congratulating you to reach another, another year. It's indeed a blessing to see another year. Amen. Amen. Okay, then uh, do we have people had their an anniversaries this year? Okay, may you please stand. We've got also something special for you. This month, Oh, this month, within this year, isn't it we've never had? So I'm asking this year, because we've never had. Do we have somebody who had the, the, the anniversary this year? Oh, sis Andy, please, may you help me? We are just the two of us today. She needs to also. <laughs> Uncle Lennon, I know you are part of the crew, please. <laughs> Amen. Amen. What do we say for that? Amen. Amen. Okay, we've come to the end of our session. We are not going to waste much of the time. We've got what we call uh, Thanksgiving. We normally thank the Lord for what he has done throughout the year. Indeed, uh, we shouldn't take this uh, opportunity for granted. The Lord has been so good. So we have to come with Thanksgiving. Being here, it's really a blessing. Amen. Amen. So we have to thank the Lord for what he has done. If we know the God that we save, we must come forward and say, thank God you have uh, given us another opportunity to live. Some people could not make it up to, day, to today, but we made it up to today. So now I'll ask the group to come forward and uh, uh, render us an item of music as we give our thanksgiving. Amen. Amen. Two, one, two. Happy Sabbath, church. Amen. 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 One, two, one, two. We're just going to do a quick sound check. You guys have nice mics. Amen. These are very they nice do, mics. Whoever is in charge of buying this knows what they're doing. <laughs> okay. We'll just do a quick sound check quickly. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Because he first loved me.
for such a powerful item of music. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, my leader. <laughs> okay, at this point in time, I'm going to separate, uh, we are going to separate in our different classes. Uh, on my left side, we've got beginner class. Do we have a beginner teacher here? Because I know most of the people being a holiday, they've gone to for, for their holidays. Do we have any beginner teacher? May you please stand if we've got one? Okay, if we don't have, we're going to improvise. Then we've got a kindergarten within the same room. I think I've got, I saw Sis Notando. Sis Notando? Okay, then we've got a primary outside. We've got primary. I saw the teachers for primary. Sis Lungi is here. Then we've got... Um, PowerPoint, PowerPoint also seems like I saw the teachers. We've got real time. They are outside as well. I saw the teachers. This is a Beulah stand, please. Then we've got Cornerstone outside also. I saw the teachers. May, t may the teachers please stand. Sis Beulah, and where are the other teachers? Thank you. That is, okay, Sis Busma Singer for PowerPoint. Then we've got... Um, Real time faith, cornerstone, they are all outside. Then we've got youth at the back. Please, youth is not here in the church. We've got at the back of the church. Then we've got baptism right uh, on my right side here. So baptism, you go this side, the elders are available. Then we've got fishers of men by the corner. When you just go out of this door, by the corner here, that's where real time is. Then we've got adult class, uh, Mama Masango, she's here. So... We shall just pray as we separate to our different classes. If you don't know where your class is, please, we will be just around here. You may ask, then we'll direct you where to go. Amen. Amen. Okay, I will ask, um, I think, uh, my elder. 
as a visitor, can you please come and bless us as we separate in our classes? Amen. Amen. Yeah, you, you give us, you separate us in music, but we also want you to bless us with a prayer as we separate. Oh. Shall we pray? Our Father in heaven, we thank you for this beautiful Sabbath. We pray as we separate into different classes that your presence will be amongst us, that the Holy Spirit will speak to us as we learn and grow in your word. We thank you for this beautiful time of worship, a time of fellowship, and that you will grow us in the name of Jesus, soon coming, Lord. Amen. Now you can bless us with the, what do you call this one? Okay, you bless us with a piece of this one. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Right to our different classes. Yeah, glory, glory to God. And um, today we are finishing uh, the Psalms, which they say we sing in all these things. I don't know also it, uh, but they say we sing with it. Yes. Yeah, we sing with it. And uh, all these instruments, we must sing with them. I am praying. Let's pray. Our gracious, loving Father, what in heaven, thank you for another Sabbath that you have uh, given to us that we can be in this house to worship you, to give glory to you, and even to present our supplications to you so that when we are going back home, we should not go back the same after being blessed and our sins being forgiven. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. amen. 
So we are on the 13th Sabbath. Um, this quarter we have been learning about Psalms. And um, uh, with me it has been a very good experience with Psalms. Because I used to choose which Psalms to, to read. And... Um, uh, but this time, uh, mainly when you are a teacher, you are obliged to read, then you read and uh, you gain more knowledge. You gain more knowledge as you, you prepare for the, for the lesson. I hope we will be able to contribute, all those who, are contrib who want to contribute. I have seen there are a lot of visitors in the house of the Lord. There is no visitor. If you have read the lesson and you have a point to share, let us share. So the 13th Sabbath um, lesson says, wait on the Lord. I looked at uh, the word wait and I said, you know what? The wait is really hard on a human being. It's very hard. Um, I don't know if you have ever waited going to see the doctor when you are very sick and you are, listening, you are waiting to see the doctor. And the doctor, when he's with another patient, you wait, you wait outside there and in your mind the doctor is wasting his time. But when you are in, with the doctor inside, you want the doctor to see you take his time. So you see the difference, eh? To say, when you are waiting, you want him to do fast. But when you are now there, you want him to take time with you. So there are so many things that we have been waiting. I just said, if Jesus came before I was born, so I was not going to experience anything. Then why are we rushing to say Jesus should come? What about our children? Don't we want them to enjoy life? Do you see? So, we, we, we is waiting. The problem is waiting, which is hard on a human being. So, now this week, uh, last week, we were, talk, we, were uh, we were learning about worshiping that never ends. Worshiping that never ends. If you connect the worshiping that never ends to waiting, you will not be bored on waiting. Because you will be worshipping, 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 worshipping. Um, I even gave an e example of the time I was waiting to have the wedding. You know, we, we, we had put the wedding in December, in November. That's why we are not getting uh, anniversaries here. Because it's far away in the end. And I'm looking at April. I'm waiting for that day. I never got bored because I was always looking forward to that day when I will come and I was imagining how people will look at me, how this, that, that. I was imagining I never got bored until that day. It never was far away. It was near because I was looking forward to it. And God is saying, when we are waiting... We should not wait in idle. We should not be idling, waiting. We should not be waiting in desperate that he must come now. We should not be waiting um, to, um, in fear to say, because now the world is coming with 666, I don't want to face this number. Therefore, let him come quickly. You are waiting in fear and in desperate. You are not going to enjoy waiting upon God. You need to take your time to say, I'm praying. I should be well looking forward with eager expectation of what will happen that day when he comes. And then he says, as you are doing that, let's be sharing the word of God. You will never get bored of it. Because you will be going out. 
evangelizing, witnessing. As you are witnessing, you are getting more knowledge and you are growing and growing in Christ. And therefore, waiting will be simpler, will be simpler to us. In Psalms, we have, we have gained a lot of knowledge. We have seen the Psalms that individuals, all the groups have been crying to God for help. And we have seen prayers of repentance, forgiveness, cleansing prayers, restoration, thanksgiving prayers. All those, the Psalms are saying, spend time in the Bible in any occasion. Remember Psalms when we were beginning, they said, when you have a funeral, what do you do? We sing. When we are celebrating, we sing. When we are worshiping, we sing. So Psalms is, um, is catering for all the occasions. You can do Psalms in any, any time. We have learned that through Psalms, we have learned that God is our creator, our redeemer and savior, our judge, but foremost of it all, the soon coming king. I was looking at the soon coming king because we, we even those who were long time, they were saying soon coming king. That's where we are mostly on waiting. That's, that's where we are mostly on waiting. He is soon to come. He has not delayed. He is soon to come. We have had psalms from the, of the sanctuary, psalms of Zion, some historical psalms, the Messiah psalms that is Christ in the psalms, the psalms of wisdom, the psalm of faith and trust and trusting, and then we have the, we have the psalms of the pilgrims. I think last week, the two weeks, we have been doing the psalms of the pilgrims. All I'm trying to say is, we wait with hope. If we wait with hope, we will be eager, we will be eagerly expecting the fulfillment of his salvation. We will be faithful, and God is going to be faithful to us. We will trust him, we will depend on him, and we will know that at the end, his promises are going to be fulfilled. Our memory text is coming from Psalms 27, verse 14. It says, wait on the Lord. Be of good courage, and he shall strengthen your heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. You can wait for other things. Other things, yes, wait upon other things. But it says, wait on the Lord. And that is our, um, our, Saturday, uh, our Saturday. Anyone who just wants to uh, maybe contribute on the waiting part. On Saturday, the waiting part. Anyone who has anything that's burning on the waiting part, that we can, uh, we also have Sunday. Sunday is the call of waiting. The call of waiting. Okay. You have. Okay. He has. Flesh, it's very painful because as you wait in your mind, you have programs that you are having. But uh, waiting on God, you need to have a spiritual connection and, 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 and it's a joyous hope Maybe I'll steal as well on Sunday. Sorry to do that. You know, the waiting of Jesus Christ should be a joyous wait. And uh, as we have mentioned, he can come at any time. So we should be ready for, for, for the second coming of Jesus. Thank you so much. Thank you. So now the second verse that we are reading is Psalms chapter 40, verse 1. Psalms 40, verse 1. It says... I waited patiently for the Lord, and he inclined to me, and he heard my cry. Um, we, um, we wait 
we wait knowing he is hearing us. It's, it's something knowing that when you are praying, when you are crying to God, when you are um, giving your problems to God, it is good knowing that he is hearing us. It's good to know that he is hearing us. I'm also going to read Psalms 39 verse 7. It says, and now, Lord, what do I wait for? My hope is in you. We wait trusting he will answer in his time and on his way. It's very difficult, that part, ne? Waiting that he is going to answer at his own time and on his own way. Very difficult, but it is necessary that as Christians, we know we should look at that. I'm also going to read Isaiah chapter 40, verse 81. Also today, I've decided to spend more in the books, in the book than more than speaking. So we are going to read Isaiah chapter 40, verse 31. It says, they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not weary. They shall walk and not faint. Thank you, ma'am. Those who wait upon who? Upon the Lord. They will not, they will not do whatever. I'm also reading uh, Romans chapter 5, verse 3 to 5. And now only that, but we also glory in tribulation, knowing that tribulation produces perseverance, and that perseverance is character. And character hope, now hope does not disappoint because the love of God has been poured out in our hearts by the Holy Spirit who was given to us. So knowing that um, I am in a tribulation, I'm knowing that the tribulation will produce what? Perseverance. And perseverance will produce what? The character. And remember we are saying the character, that is the only thing that we will take to heaven. Mm. One day I said these dresses we buy, very expensive. Mm. You know, they will not even escort us to the graveyard. They would like to choose something that has open heel that they can dress me nicely. And it will be a cheap thing. Mm. It will be a cheap thing. But we spend all our time going, doing these expenses, wasting time, not spending on God. Psalms 40 verse 8 says, I delight to do your will, O my God, and your law is within my heart. Delight is something that we need to be pleased and to desire having. Only only can submit or surrender, only if we can submit and surrender when you know and love someone. So seek God and seek him first. It is important. Um, Psalms, one, uh, Psalms 37 verse 7 says, Rest in the Lord and wait patiently for him. Do not fight because of him who prospers in his way because of the man who brings wicked schemes to pass. So to wait, we wait in surrender, in submission. We even wait even if it seems like the enemy is winning. That's how we wait. We don't wait in circumstances that are only good. We wait in all the circumstances. Anyone who wants to contribute before I close um, for waiting on Sunday. For waiting on Sunday. I'm reading the last verse there. It's First um, Corinthians chapter 2 verse 9. Why should we wait? Where we are going, eye has not seen, nor ear has heard. Neither has it entered into the heart of man the things that God has prepared for those who love him. 
it is worthy waiting. It is worthy waiting because we know that if we are eager in expecting what God is going to accomplish, we will surrender and submit to his will. We will also not wait in idling. We will be going out to, with, to be witnesses, to evangelize whatever is um, supposed to be done so that our waiting does not make um, waiting very hard. Anyone else who wants to contribute anything that you want to contribute again? I'm, I'm going to ask you to read Psalms 131. 131. So Psalms 131 is the third uh, psalm, the shortest third is the number is number three. The shortest one is 117, and I read it last week. It's, it, it's all praise God, praise God, praise God. Psalms 134 is the second psalm, which is the shortest chapter in Psalms. And that one we said you only sing it when you have, fin you have finished, when they went to Zion. From Zion, they leave the Levites there praying into the house of the Lord. The people who are going out, they are saying, we are leaving you here, but keep on praying for us. Keep on praying for us. So let us see. What does the shortest, the third shortest um, psalm say? Are you reading? Who is reading from? Yes, 131. It has three verses. Okay, Psalms 131 reads in this way. Lord, my heart is not haughty, nor my eyes lofty. Neither do I concern myself with great matters, nor with things too profound for me. Surely I have calmed and quieted my soul like a winged child with his mother. Like a winged child is my soul within me. O oh Israel, hope in the Lord from this time forth and forever. Amen. Amen. Now David is bringing the word of my heart is not haunting. He is trying to say, Lord, I am, I am not um, uh, um, I am now matured. I'm now matured. Whatever can come to me, I will swallow it. Remember God, um, uh, David wanted to build the house of the Lord. And did God allow him? No. no. He said, your son is going to build it. Remember, Moses also wanted to reach Canaan. Did he enter the promised land? No. No. It's because of the experiences on the, way, on the way. But it doesn't mean that what we are experiencing will stop us to enter heaven. But David here is just saying, listen, the hunt is to be proud, is to be proud, is to, um, to be, I mean, proud, I think would be the, first, the, the good thing. He, does, he is saying, I don't want to be like the devil, what the devil did in heaven because of being haunted, because of looking forward to taking your position. The devil sinned in heaven. So he says, I don't want to be like that. I don't want to be like that. I want to be a, a person who is going to listen and wait upon God. That's what David is saying here. That's the main thing that God is, I mean, uh, uh, David is saying here. Now, if we, if we read, if we, okay, let's, let me just explain um, what they have explained on the lesson here. They say God's people live in a world that afflicts the, the, the faithful, a world full of temptations and hardship. I don't know if you pass through that one 10 minutes, fine, my dear. If you, if you pass through the hardship or not, I don't know. But for almost everyone experiences the hardship and the what? And the temptations. Mainly, as we one time somebody was sharing here, it says, you are praying for something. Let's say you are praying for the car. Your neighbor doesn't have the car. And you are busy praying for the car. And your neighbor buys a car. And he buys a BMW. Mm. And then you are still praying for the car. 
He changes the BMW. He goes for the Range Rover. He goes for the Volvo. And when you are busy doing praying, you know those things, they disappoint us sometimes. But we should know that our God is in control. He knows what is good for us. What we should do is not look to the neighbor. You and up. That's all. Don't say what, who is doing what, what is happening to this one. What is, those things are going to discourage you. You only wait upon God and you ask and wait. He is going to give you at his own time and his own way. That's all what is happening here. Down there they say verse 2 because he read already. The verse 2 is acknowledging of God's greatness. Uh, makes them humble. Knowing that God is great makes us humble. The other day we were talking about the sanctuary. We said when you are humble, when you are a, a, an ambassador of God, hey, Sunday you are an ambassador. Tuesday you are an ambassador. Thursday, Friday, there is no hour that you are not an ambassador. So you cannot say, on Monday, I can do whatever I want to do. On Friday evening, that's when we can say, house come we worship. Yet on Monday, the children saw you watching the TVs, other programs, and Tuesday, you never said, come, let us pray. And only on Friday, you say, come, let us pray. That surprises our children. And this is why Noah failed, I mean, yeah, no, Lot. That's why Lot failed to go and call his children back because they never saw him worshiping. They never saw him worshiping. And when he was calling to say, God is saying we should get out of here, it was just a strange thing to mention about God. They saw that it's very, uh, something that is very strange. But his uh, um, Psalms here is saying, when we are humble, when we, are, we know that God is great, we will be humble. Because of time, let us go on, um, on Tuesday. On Tuesday is bringing in the sheaves, bringing in the sheaves. And we are looking at Psalms 120, 126. 126 is also a very beautiful uh, psalm that is uplifting uh, the psalms that uh, speaking about restoration and redemption. If we read you do that one. This, um, I don't know if we will read, but it says here, I said uh, on my notes here, I said, the Lord was look, looking um, looked upon the cap uh, captivity, the Zion, and they say to him, it is like a dream. These people were in ca captivity for 70 years. And now God has seen and heard their prayers. And he is redeeming them. They are saying it was like a dream. Just imagine if you have been praying for something for years. For years. And suddenly one morning you will wake up. There it comes, boom. What will it be? It will be like a dream. But mainly when our God, Jesus, is going to come, because we are saying he is delaying now, when he comes that day, those who will be faithful, they will seem as if they are dreaming. It will seem as if they are dreaming because they would have been um, um, uh, delivered. So Psalms 126 is a rejoicing psalm because of the deliverance that God has done. And maybe let, let me read, let me try and read. Psalms 126 says, When the Lord turned against the captivity of Zion, we were like them that dream. Verse 2, Then then was our mouth filled with laughter and our tongue with singing. Then, then said 
They among the, the heathen. The Lord has done great things for them. That's how we need to feel to say, this is now when the, these people who were in bondage, who were now celebrating, the people could see, could, oh, the Lord has been good to them, and he has done great things to them. Um, we can only know that God has been good if we have experience of the past. When you recall, I was in hospital, and I, went, I came out because God was good for me. I didn't have food one day. We had food because God was there for us. Only when you can remember what God has done before, it will be good that day when you are being uh, delivered. But bringing in the sheaves, this is nice. You know, um, I, I grew up in a family where they, 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 they like growing millies and whatever. When they are plowing, not good time. When they are doing whatever, not good time. But when they are taking out the nuts at the, at the garden, we were always there because, you know, it was good time. It was a good time. So this will also be a good time when we will be bringing those who have been with, whom we have witnessed it to. Those people who will say, it was you who brought me here. It was you. You know, you will even be wondering, how come, when? But it was you who has brought me here. It is our character that has to convince these old people who can be with us in heaven. So uh, Romans chapter 8 verse 28 says, All things work together for those who trust in God. Whether you are in problems, one day you will be in good. These things, they work together. One time I was talking of a cake to say when you are baking a cake, you know bake, uh, baking powder is tasteless. You know salt is sour. But when you put all those things, even before you put it in the oven, you will be, you'll be doing this. Because you have put all those things together. So now as a Christian, don't separate tribulations from the goodness of God. If you separate them, if you say, God, this one, is, this one should go this side, this one should go this side, you will not enjoy Christianity. Christianity is a joint thing. And he says tribulation is the one which brings character. It brings character. And character brings hope. And hope does not disappoint at all. And that's why we need to do it as a package. Your life has to be a package. Whether you are in problems or you are in, in, in a good mood that day, whether things are working nicely for you that time, always be in God. Sometimes when we, are, we have gone there higher, we forget that it is God who has put us there. When we are driving these big cars, you know, our friends are driving the small cars, we go boom, boom, boom. We forget that it is our time God has given us. Their time can also come. Their time can also come. They are saying we pray there. But I just wanted to say something very little on waiting in God's Sabbath rest. I don't know. I said last time to say, what motivates you coming to church? Is it coming to rub shoulders with me? Is it to come and see who has been dressed well? Mm. All it is about you and your God. Thank you, my sister. It is about you and God. Let us take Sabbath to be a holy day. It is holy. Therefore, God separated it from all other words, other days. It has to be special. We know the sun will still uh, rise from the east and set in the north. It will still have 24 hours, but God says it is special. It is special. On Thursday, my summary is joy comes in the morning. Oh, you can't miss that one. Joy comes in the morning. 
I don't know which verse I can read for the joy comes in the morning. Um, I, I had so many verses there, but they are saying I should pray there. Um, I think um, let us look at um, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 51 and 55. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trump shall sound and all the dead shall rise in a, in incorruptible. And we shall be changed, for the incorruptible must be on in Corrupt, corrupt, corruption. And this mortal must put on immortal. So that's the day we are waiting. Oh, that's the day I am waiting. I don't know about you, but that's the day I am waiting. When I will be changed, I don't know what, whether I will have wings or I will have no wings. All I know that when the trumpet shall sound, I will be there. I will be there. I'm trusting and hoping, I'm striving that that day I should be one of them going into heaven. May our lesson is that we have been learning this quarter, may it still remain in our hearts that we should know that psalms you can sing when you are sick, psalms when you are happy, psalms when you are on a funeral, on a wedding, sing psalms and God is going to be with you. Let us pray. Our gracious, loving Father, what in heaven, we know that waiting upon you is very hard. We are asking for the Holy Spirit, Father, to be in us. He should be the one guiding us, leading us into your truth, Father. We should be able to spend time because we have been filled with the Holy Spirit. Father, may you also take our names and write them in that book of life. That when that day comes, as we are all in this room, may our names be found in that, in those, in that book. That we should all be happy that day to say, there comes our, our Savior whom we have been waiting for. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Now we're getting to our uh, praise and worship time, and we are going to enjoy ourselves in the Lord. So, <clears throat> um, while we are waiting for our altar antenna, we are, yeah, their class is not yet dismissed. Okay, it's fine. Shall we bow down as we pray before we start ndalo azo namhlaba siyabonga inkosi ekuseni ngale litho bawuthe wasinikeza lona ukuthi size phambi kwesihlalo sobukhosi siyizone sinje inkosi sizokudumisa sizokubonga sicela ukuba nawo kudumisa kwethu kwabe ngokwamkelekile esihlaleni sobukhosi ngo Jesus Christ ngiyakholeka amen okay we're going to start with the chorus while people are coming in Sweet Jesus, sweet Jesus, what a wonder you are. You are brighter than the morning 
comes down. You are fairer, much fairer than the lily that's crossed by the ways. You are precious, most precious than gold. Sweet Jesus, sweet Jesus, what a wonder you are. You are brighter than the morning star. You are fairer, much fairer than the lily that crossed by the ways. You are precious, most precious. Stand go, just come. You are the rose of Sharon, the fairest of them all. You are everything my heart desires. You are fairer, much fairer than the lily that grows by the ways. And you are precious, most precious than gold. I live for Jesus day after day. I live for Jesus day after day. The Holy Spirit I will obey. I live for Jesus. Day after day, so sweet Jesus, sweet Jesus, what a wonder you are. You are brighter than the morning star. You are fairer, much fairer. Then the lily that's close by the ways, you are precious, most precious than gold. Josh, I'm waiting for you here. Sorry? Yeah. Um, where's no Logzola? Oh, by the way. All right. Um, another chorus. Which one? Anyone? Okay. Uh, okay. Um, I'm hesitant to start this hymnals with two parts that are missing here. I don't know what's happening here. Um, we are going to start with our hymns by making use of number one. 184 184 Joy to the world it's a day Joy to Joy to the world, joy, joy to the world, the Lord is come. Is it? I'm taking the key high. Okay. Let's go. Joy to the world, the Lord is come. Let us receive the key. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
One, we are going to read it in Isizulu. One seven one, sorry, one seven one. One seven one. Mlindi o dongen le zayon. The key. Okay, D. song, um, I'm going to ask Ammonium to come forward and give us an item after this one. Um, uh, 
Um, let's take 180. We are going to lead it in English. 180. I feel like I am straining my voice. My mic is not good. Just a moment. Give us again, okay? saints in the mighty name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Uh, pardon me for interrupting um, this praise and worship service, but uh, there's an important um, thing I need to do here. Um, by the way, you, you look lovely. Uh, and the music sounds very nice. Uh, you are singing very nice, Bazalwani. Yes. Um, I'm standing here, I think, just to address a very important uh, issue. Very, 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 very important issue, Bazalwani. Um, I think it's to just remind um, all of us that are here, or for those who are new, I think just to also confirm um, the position of the church, I think, on certain, on th on certain things. Um, I think it needs to be clear that this church, and I'm talking about Kempton Park Central, and even uh, you know, the Seventh-day Adventist Church, what do we actually stand for? Where am I going with this? Uh, I'm sure some of us are saying, you know, the speaker is speaking in riddles. Um, there are some, I think, unfortunate comments which are regrettable that were, I think, shared in this church last week. I think for some of us who are here, we would know about those comments. And I think particularly uh, co comments relating to our women in the church. Yeah, um, it is not what we are aligned to as this, uh, the Kempton Park Central Church or the Seventh-day Adventist Church. 
Um, the church is very clear in terms of the ordination of women. I want to make that very clear, Bazalwan. We've got a position there. As a church, the church does ordain women. I think let, let's, let, let us not um, have a different view or a view that is uh, distorted. This is what this church stands for. The teaching of women in the church, it's something that happens, Bazalwan. And it is not something that is outside uh, the principles of this church or what this church stands for. Teaching does happen. It, 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 it is actually led by women in this church. So I, I think those are the important things that we wanted to sort of highlight. I mean, the issue of, you know, women or men having, you know, authority uh, over, or rulership over women. Things like that. I mean, we need to be very clear what the Bible says about that. The Bible is very clear in the very beginning that when Eve was created, the Bible says that God was actually making uh, Eve to be a comparable mate for Adam. And I think we take it as far as looking at the sentence or the judgment that actually came when sin had actually come into the world. And... The Bible is very clear that that was not by God's design. And the other things is what we need to ask us. What we find as a sentence there, is that descriptive or is that prescriptive? I think one day as a church, we'll sit, we'll have time, and just have a study or a lesson in and around it so that we actually uh, get to understand the role of women in the church. There is a very pivotal role that women play in the church. So I want to just make it clear that we've got a very clear position or a stand as the Seventh-day Adventist Church, as, uh, yeah, as the Adventist Church, or this church that we are in uh, today, the Kempton Park Central Church. So let us uh, be clear in that. And I, let me take this opportunity uh, before I vacate this place, brethren, and just urge all of us, or maybe should I say, as Paul would say it, beseech you, by the mercies of God, that when we are given an opportunity to address the people of God, when we are given an opportunity to stand here, let us remember it is a privilege. It is supposed to be God himself standing here. So when we stand here, let us actually ensure that we do not displease God with our comments. Let us ensure that we do not speak what we think. Let us not speak our opinions. In fact, let us actually speak what comes from God. Our presentations, brethren, they should be filled with messages that will actually bring people closer to God. When people move out of God's house, they must say that, you know, God has spoken to them. When we stand here and teach the church, let us ensure that we impart knowledge that will prepare people, you know, for the second coming of Christ. And of course, there will be times when the church of God will need to be rebuked, Bazalwan. We are not shying away from that as well. When there is a stern word of rebuke that needs to come, it certainly needs to come, but it must come with love, Bazalwan. So let us not use this opportunity and deliver the word of God and leave the people of God without hope. Lastly, the church or the congregation of Kempton Park Central it is a church that serves a dynamic group of people. Our church, it doesn't only serve the people that are here. As we can see, we are live streaming. There are people from other parts of the world that follow and listen to the messages that we have here. Let us be sensitive to you know, the other groups of people from a gender point of view, from an ethnicity point of view, and, and other, 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 other points of view. Let us ensure, Bazalwani, that the message that we preach, it is a message that will prepare people for the second coming of Christ. Amen. I thank you all. I'll, I'll ask the praise team to come back and continue with the uh, music. Thank you.
can you please EQ the mics a little bit and give us a little bit of lows one two, one on this two, one. one Take two. down the reverb as well. One, two, one, two. One, two, one, two, one, two. One, two. Testing. Take 191 in our hymnals. We are going to lead it in English. Oh, 
work through us and we ask that you may bless us in abundance may we live here with sufficient blessings that will last us for the weeks to come forgive us our sins that can have a potential to stand before us and hearing your word these are your kids these are your children you know their struggles talk to them may I disappear as you appear in Jesus name amen I greet the church of God in the one of name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen, Amen. Amen indeed. Um, first off, I would like to uh, welcome all of you to this beautiful Sabbath today. Thank you for joining us and choosing to spend your Sabbath with us here at Kempton Park Central. I'd also like to extend a warm welcome to the um, presence online. Um, thank you for joining us as well. Um, and today we also have a lot of visitors, which is amazing. Remember last week I told you we had two pages? Guess what? We have two pages again today. Amen? Amen, Amen indeed. Um, so I will go through the names. Um, when I call out your name, please do stand and please note that it is not to embarrass you or to put attention on you, but we want to show you how special you are and how good we feel to have you to come and spend your day with us today. Amen. Amen. So please do stand and remain standing. We have a little gift for you and we want to welcome you in a special way. Um, the first name, also the other thing, if I do mispronounce your name, do forgive me in advance, please. Um, we have O Mangaliso Siyongwana. Mangaliso Siyongwana. Amen. amen. Church, let's give them the amen they deserve. Amen. 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 And then we have Li Famboya. Amen. Amen. We have Ulinda Mboya. Amen. Amen. Then we have U Sean Denenga. Amen. Amen. And then we have U Perfect. I uh, didn't get the surname quite well, but Perfect. Amen. Amen. Um, then we have U Chabangu. Amen. It's a whole unit. Um, <laughs> we have uh, uh, Porsche and Zie. Porsche, amen. amen. Then we have Harmonium Quartet. They did give us a song. Um, I guess I won't really expect them to stand, but they are special visitors for us today. And then we have Yolanda Bangisi. Amen. amen. We have Nigel Mbini. Amen. Amen. We have uh, Ledesma Tendere. Amen. Amen. We also have Prosper Tendere. Amen. Amen. We have Amobi Chimoyo. Amen. Amen. We have uh, Ditebuho Mweketi Tato and Tebuho Siempe. Amen. Um, that is all for our guest today. However, if I did not call your name, but it is your first time coming to Kempton Park Central today, please also stand. If it is your first time at Kempton Park Central, um, Corista, please help us with the song. Uh, come on, one. We welcome you. We welcome you. We welcome you. We welcome you, oh dear friends. We welcome you, oh dear friends. We welcome you. We welcome you, welcome you, we welcome you, we welcome you, dear friends, we welcome you, dear friends. 
Uh, we welcome you indeed. We hope that you enjoy the rest of your day with us. Um, and also there is lunch, so you don't have to go home. I will make sure that you're well catered for. Please do stay. Um, so for going on to the announcements, can I please ask the elders to please come and assist me? Um, Elder Chipubuze, if you are... Oh, Elder Mangwala is here. Oh, oh. <laughs> Um, this is the second and final reading of the membership transfer in of the name of Brother Lubuto Chitiwi from Kempton Park East SDA Church to Kempton Park Central SDA Church. I move that the church accepts the membership. Is he here? Um, is he here? At the back. Okay. It would be nice I mean, for him to sort of come in so that the church can see him. All right. He's not at the back. Okay. Um, the name has been moved by Zalwan. Um, any seconder? It has been seconded. All in favor that we accept this name into the membership of Kempton Park Central Church? Can I see the hands? I'm looking at Kempton Park Central members. I see the hands. Thank you. The name is carried. Thanks. Then uh, this is the second and final reading for the membership transfer in of the name of Brother Sebenzilis Tole from Jonalanga West View SDA Church to Kempton Park Central SDA Church. I move that the church accept this name into our fellowship. Is she here, Sister Sebenzile? Is it he? Oh, sorry. Okay, not here. All right. Thank you very much. Um, the name has been moved. Can I get any seconder? Okay, the name has been seconded. Thank you. Um, all in favor that we accept that name into the membership of Kempton Park Central Church. Can I see the hands? All right, I see the hands. Thank you very much. It is carried. Thank you very much. Um, and then this is the first reading for the nomination of uh, Brother Michael Chihave for the Office of Secretary Branch Te Treasurer for the branch. And then um, there's a reminder to all the mothers with babies to please um, utilize the baby room at the back. Uh, so if you do have a baby, utilize the baby room at the back. If you do not have a baby, please do not utilize the baby room as it is reserved for the babies. Um, there will be an afternoon program today at 3 p.m. Uh, the, con uh, the topic is, uh, well, it is a conversation on music. Oh, sorry, I've just been corrected that uh, it starts at 2.30. 2.30. Um, there is a notification that there will not be an aerobic session tomorrow morning. So that has been cancelled. Um, we will also be having our first quarter business meeting on Sunday, the 7th of April at 10 a.m. The meeting is a hybrid meeting, which means that we will be at church, but you can also join online. Um, if you are a Kempton Park Central Church member, but you are not in the business meeting group, please come and see me so I can add you to the group and you can get the details. Um, children's ministers will be having VBX from the 24th to the 28th of June, 2024. Uh, the fee per child is 1,400 Rand. That is all inclusive. Parents are asked to start making payments to the church account with the reference with the child's name. Um, there is also suggested payment methods uh, with 500 Rand at the end of each month, and then the last month will be 400 Rand. And then the Pathfinder Department will also be having um, an excursion uh, dated for the 4th of May to Marupeng, the cradle of humankind. Um, the fee per child is still to be confirmed, but it should be included. Um, at least the details will be sent later on today in the church group as well. Um, there will be an inter-district Pathfinder Campery on the 24th of June. The fee per child is 1,350. Um, that is inclusive of everything as well. And then payment can also be done in three equal payments of 450 uh, per month till the due date. Um, the... The TOC Senior Youth Department is currently seeking assistance from qualified Adventist psychologists. 
to support our youth community in the conference. So if you are a psychologist or you know an Adventist psychologist, please do assist and bring their name forward or let them know so that they can bring their name forward. Um, if you have any information or you want to um, take that forward, please contact the senior youth director, Pastor Maichu. Um, I will share the email onto the church group. And if you do want the details, but you don't want to be in the church group or you are not in the church group, please come and see me about that and I'll give you the details. Um, then for prayer garden, uh, the Mahele's grandfather is not feeling well and is currently hospitalized in Lesotho. Um, so they are not here with us today. May we please remember them and the rest of their family uh, in our prayers. And also the elders do request that if you have any bereavement or anybody is not feeling well to let the church know um, if there's any of that event happening. So I ask that when I greet you again, you give me a nice, vibrant and warm amen. You know, just to make up for how the weather is outside. So, I greet the church of God in the wonderful name of my Lord and my Savior, Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Woo. Now that was lovely. I ask that to start the service, we carry over that same vigor and vibrance and sing our opening song, song number 100. What a friend we have in Jesus. of God in the name of our living Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Today, I have a simple job, which is offertory and also do promotion for our new property next door. And we all know that the first week of each month, we have a special offering, which include the offering for that property. As a word of encouragement, I really want to 
take us through the book of First Kings. Can we all open our Bible? The book of First Kings, chapter 17, we will read from verse 8 to 16. And you can read on your side, but I will just share the message that comes from this book. Here we find prophet Elijah and a widower. And in this tale of a story, we found familiar. And in a place that also was suffering of famine. At the same time, we find this widower who was about just collecting sticks so that she go and cook the last meal and her and, and, and the son so that they can die. But God, when you trust in him, and when you sacrifice and give to him, that which you believe that is not all about us, but it's about him, God do miracle. In our offering, we too should understand that some of us are sitting here thinking of our different dire situation. Like some thinking that this will be my last money, that once I use it, then I will die. But God today is telling us that when we use that, which we believe we're thinking is the last one, for the work of God, that widower was using the flour and oil to cook the meal for the messenger, the prophet of God. And for us today is for the work of God. The Kempton Park Central Church is planted in this community for a purpose. And for it to be able to execute its mission, it needs facilities that enable them to execute the mission. And that's why God is talking to all of us today for us to sacrifice and offer that which we have, even though we might think that it is the last one. And God will give us abundantly. That that oil that you are thinking is the last one, God will make it to never end. That when you go back, you find that it's always there, but you thought it will be the last one. And that's what we found from this widow who showed trust and also obedient in God's provision. The same God is still with us today. And he's promising us that if we give from our heart, knowing that it's not all about us, he will always take care of us. It's not us who take care of ourselves, but he take care of ourselves by providing the necessary resources that we require. Next week, we will be having a special offering. At this stage, we have put a target of 500,000 that will really require to cover the gap that we have used to purchase that, ch that building there for our children church. At this stage, as of end of Feb, we're sitting at about 80,000. And I believe that now we can cross over the 100,000 by next week. So we really want to encourage everyone, as you bring your tithe, as you bring your church budget, please think about also another offering that is dedicated for that building. That building is there for the mission of the gospel of the church. And we really want all of us to support this mission of the, like this lady, the widower, who uses the last resources she has for the support of the gospel and the mission of God. Let's bow our heads. Let's kneel down as we pray, actually. Let's kneel. <clears throat> Heavenly Father, we thank you, dear Lord. We thank you for being our loving God, the God who take care of us, who take care of our needs and all the things that we don't know about, but you take care of it even before we know about it, O oh Lord. We pray that you touch the heart of everyone that is here and the heart of those that are not with us today, but part of this congregation. That Father, as we think of giving our blessing, that which comes from you, we should give with sacrificial heart 
knowing that you are the one who bless us. You are the one who give us all the provision and endly that when we give, you will bless us as you have also promised us in the book of Micah chapter 3 verse 10. O oh Lord, we pray that you give us courage where we are struggling, that we should trust more on you, that Father, you can do it without us, but you want us to be part of it and strengthen us, O oh Lord, from our weakness. We pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Um, Harmonium will give us an item when offering is collected. Repentance is turning around, my friend. Repentance is turning around. It's turning your back on the things of the past. It's turning to Jesus whose love will last. It's living the life that you live so forgetting the things that were once your goal forsaking the things that were rob your soul beginning with Jesus in full control for this he will help you do repentance is turning the King, all oh, glorious above, and gratefully sing His wonderful love. Our shield and defender, the Ancient of Days, pavilion in splendor, and girded with grace. Thy bountiful care, what tongue can recite? It breathes in the air, it shines in the light. It streams from the hills, it descends to the plain, and sweetly distills in the dew and the Frail children of dust and feeble as frail, in thee do we trust, nor find thee to fail. Thy mercies how tender, how firm to the end, how make a defense. Redeemer and friend.
Let's bow our heads. We thank you, O oh Lord, for the gifts and all the blessing that you have bestowed on us and the church. We pray that you bless us every day of our life for everything that we need. Amen. Amen. I greet you all in the name of the great, the all-encompassing God, King Jesus. Uh, what a week it's been, what a week it's been, and we are all glad to be here. Uh, hence, King David writes, and he says, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go unto the house of the Lord, for it is a great privilege to be here. Research shows that the human being performs at optimum level, at absolute best, when they feel that they belong. In other words, when they feel a sense of belonging. Now, a sense of belonging is a feeling of security and support when there is a sense of acceptance, inclusion, and identity. Now, when Jesus came to earth, he came in human form. He felt the pain of having blisters on his feet, the pain of betrayal, the pain of a broken heart. Yes, Jesus felt that. He endured starvation. And when he had finished his mission down here on earth, he returned to heaven in human form, fully human. He did not claim his, his godly body back. All the memories from here on earth are still intact. From the moments they spat on him, from the moments they made a mockery of him, from the moments he was tempted, Jesus remembers all. And I say this today in the entire solar system. There is not a planet that as a human representative in heaven, we the human beings are the only ones. Hence, in Matthew chapter 11, verse 28, he says, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and you will find rest unto your souls. Now, Jesus says this only because he is not a spectator kind of God. Jesus came to earth and experienced what it is to be a human. He experienced humanity himself. And let me say this, there is no one here on this earth who understands you like Jesus does. It is not your wife, it is not your husband, it is not your kids, but Jesus understands you fully. And when we get to heaven, the Lord will ask, who are these? Who are these that have come? And Jesus will say, these are they who have come out of great tribulation. They have washed their robes in the blood of the Lamb. They have come through great sorrow into great jubilation. They are redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. Hence the young man, uh, Joseph M. Scriven, writes to him after getting betrayed by his best friend, after losing his wife, his fiancée rather, twice. First one dies, second one dies. He sits down and he writes a poem, and the poem goes like this, What a friend we have in Jesus. Because Jesus is the only one who understands who we are. And I say to you today, bring all your petitions unto him. For he's the only one who can understand your sorrows. He's the only one who can understand your broken heart. He is the only one who can come through for you. So I'll ask that we kneel as I pray. Ask that we kneel as I pray. Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, we want to thank you for this day that you've given unto us, Lord. We prostrate ourselves unto you with our hearts heavy laden. Please do give us ear, dear Jesus, we ask. Uh, we want to say thank you, dear Jesus, for your undying love. We want to say thank you, dear Jesus, for the world, for when the world is in a frenzy and is in, a and is in chaos. You, dear Jesus, still sit firmly on your throne, great King. We ask, Savior, that uh, like a satellite wrenched from its orbit, dear Jesus, with the pathos of one who finds no way where there is way. Come through, Jesus. And when we reach the place where two roads diverge, dear Jesus, we ask that, Father, you make, make us choose the, the road that is less traveled so that we can say we chose the road filled with temptations, but that led, led us to the promised land, dear Jesus. We ask that you may come and give us hope. 
Help us, dear Jesus, for we are, we are behind still bars, still bars, dear Jesus, that, that shackle us, Father, and, and, dera- and, and delay our, our potential. But we ask that you may come, Father, and clip our wings so that we may fly and call the sky our own. Thank you for everything that you've done for us, dear Jesus. We ask that you may come and you may help he. That is, that, that we ask that you may come and help he that is anxiety-ridden, dear Jesus, that you may set them free. He who is depressed, dear Jesus, give him freedom, dear Jesus. I ask that you may help he that is wayward, that he may find his way back unto the house of the Lord. Thank you for this day, dear Jesus. Help us and be with us. I pray all of this in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. I greet you again, church. So, at the back, they told me that I must very carefully not call the ch- children's story a sermon, but rather a sermon, Nate. So, I'm going to ask Ooh, Miss Mashanza to come up front and please give us and the children the sermon, Nate. and girls who wants to pray for us all these hands everyone's hands up who am I going to pick everyone's hands up everyone is hands up because everyone can pray who am I going to pick who who do you want to pay for us no okay let's close our eyes as I pray thank you God for making us up in the morning God please bless us as we are doing the children's story, God. And God, please bless up the others that don't even that don't know you, God. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you for that wonderful prayer. Guys, did you hear what the elder said? He said that we are going to have our own children's church. Did you hear that? Guys, how many of you are ready? Are, are you ready, guys? We're going to have our own church. Let me see your Bibles. Yeah, because if we have our own church, which means we're doing our own Sabbath school, we're doing our own divine service, everyone has to be participating. Maybe one day you're going to preach, Kakiso, you know? Right? Right? Anna, maybe the other day you're going to preach. Where's your Bible? Right? We talked about this. We should all have our what? Our Bibles, we're going to have our own church, guys. So we're going to be busy. Everyone is going to be participating, right? Okay. So now that we have our own Bibles, can somebody please open in Romans 5 verse 8 for us? Because now you can't have a Bible and you can't even use the Bible. Do you know what I'm saying? Romans 5 verse 8. Romans 5 verse 8. Who's opening? Who's going to read? Who's going to read? Romans 5. Romans 5. Okay. Okay. Who wants to read? I want the younger ones. Therefore, having been but God the the master's has own love to word as in that while we were still sins, Christ died for us. Okay. 
Okay, one more person to read a different version. But God demonstrates his possible dare to die. But God demonstrates his own love for us in his while we were still sinners. Christ died for us. Amen. Guys, I'm going to tell you the greatest story there ever was. The what? I'm going to tell you the greatest story. Aren't you excited? The greatest story there ever was. How many great stories do you know? Like, oh, you know a lot of greatest. But my story is even better. Better than that, hey? It's better than all 17. The greatest story. Does anyone think they know the greatest story? No, because guys, I know the greatest story there ever was. And it talks about one of the greatest truths, right? Do you know that Christ allowed it that he might die? He allowed it, right? Because he could stop it at any time. Do you get that? But he allowed it. Why would Christ do that? Because we always talk about the fact that my God is so big, so strong and so mighty. There's nothing my God cannot do, right? And yet he allowed it that he might die, right? Who knows that story? The greatest story there ever was. Who wants to tell it to us? Just a little bit. Just a little bit. Just a little um, okay, so there was one of God's disciples that was turning his back on Jesus, and then God said to his disciples, come, let's go pray outside. He took some of the disciples and they went to pray on the mountain. And he prayed for a very long time. This, and God said, um, please can you wait for me? And he prayed so long that the disciples slept. And then God was like, <clears throat> and then the disciples, the, the disciples woke up. They were like, yes, sir. And then, and then I was like, I told you to wait. Then, then he kept on praying and the disciples kept on sleeping. Then God came with the disciple that turned his back on Jesus. And then they took him. And then the Pharisees and Majesties were so happy. And then he was... They made him carry his cross, and then they nailed him on his cross. Amen. Amen. You've told my whole story. I told my whole story. Well done, right? So now what happened is that Pilate handed over Jesus to be crucified, right? Because they took him, and they took him to the high priest, and then eventually they took him to the governor, Pilate. And then Pilate handed Jesus over to be crucified. And then the soldiers, they took Jesus, right? And they stripped him of all his clothes, right? And they made a crown of thorns, and they put it on his head, right? And they mocked him. They laughed at him, and they said to him, we salute you, king of the Jews. <laughs> and they laughed at him. Like, what a king. Look at him. And they put him in a purple robe and they laughed at him. They were like, what kind of manner, what manner of king is this, right? They mocked him and they laughed at him. And do you know, he allowed it. He did what? While they mocked him and they laughed at him and they made fun of him, he allowed it. Then they led Jesus to a place called Gogota. Who knows what that means? The place of the? The place of the? Oh, you know. The place of the what? Anyone? Come on. The place of the skull, right? When they got there, like she said, they nailed him to the cross. And they put a notice that says, this is Jesus, the king of the Jews. And 
what happened there was that people started to shout, right? And what were they doing again? Mocking him. And they were laughing at him. And they were saying what? Save yourself. What kind of king is this? He spoke about being a king. He spoke about tearing down the temple in three days and rebuilding it. Let me read here. In the same way, the chief priests and, the t and everyone, they mocked him. He saved others, they said, but he can't save himself. <laughs> what manner of king is this? They laughed. They mocked him. Right? He is the king of Israel. Let him come down from the cross. Then we'll believe him. Otherwise, what kind of king is he? We can't worship this king. <laughs> and they mocked him. They kept laughing at him. He trusts in God. Let God rescue him. Right? Now, if he wants him, for he said, I am the son of God. But why can't he save himself? And they mocked him. And do you know what Jesus did? He came down from the cross. Did he? What did he do? No. What did he do? He allowed it. He stayed on the cross. He allowed it, right? And they mocked him and they laughed, but he allowed it. And then he died. And then he was buried. And he stayed in the grave for three days. Did he do that? Or did he burst from the grave on the first day? Did he burst from the grave on the second day? No. He fulfilled it as it was and he allowed it and he stayed in the grave for three days, right? Why did he do all that? Why was he mocked and laughed at and ridiculed and he allowed it? And yet my God is so big, so strong and so mighty. There's nothing my God cannot do. And yet he allowed it. Why? What do you think? Ah. <sighs> But why? Why would he do that? Why? Because he wanted to stay with Jesus. Okay, okay. Anyone else? Okay, yes. Because he wanted our sins to be away. Yes, yes, absolutely. You want to say something else? Because he loved us. Such love, right? Such love. One more. He forgave their sins. He cared for us. Yes, he allowed it. He allowed it. Jesus died on the, on the cross. He allowed all of it because he, he loved us. He cared for us. And we always sing the song, Baby Jesus, baby Jesus, I love you, I love you. You are my savior, you are my savior. Every day, every day. And when we sing, you are my savior, it's because he saved us, right? He saved us. Now, if Jesus had burst from the cross, would we be able to sing that song? No, because then how would he be our savior? So Jesus allowed all of it for us because he loved us. What manner of love is this for each and every one of us, okay? And because of such love, we too, right? Because Jesus loved us so much and he died on the cross, our wrongdoings and, and our sins, we confess them to him, okay? We confess and we ask God to forgive us every day. Amen. Right. Who wants to pray for us? Let's close our eyes as we pray. Thank you, God, for the wonderful day and week. Can you please bless? Can you please heal the death and the sickness, Lord? Can you please heal those in hospital? Can you please help them so they can come to church every Sabbath day in Jesus? name I pray and can you also heal the sickness that's coming can you also heal the time can you also help uh, us to understand your word can you please protect us from all of the evil deaths can you please can you please take care of us from the death and the sickness 
Jesus name I pray in the holy name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, my friends. You can go back to your places. Thank you, thank you as we do. So don't forget to come I genuinely loved the enthusiasm that the kids had for their little sermon eights. I pray and hope that we also show the same enthusiasm for our sermon. But before we start with that, let me introduce the panel up front. So the brother who was giving us the prayer was Ooh, Brother Bani Chanda. May the church say amen. amen. And then the elder who did the offertory reading is Ooh, Elder Chidney Chipabutse. Oh, sorry, Sydney Chipabuti, my bad. Amen. Amen. And then, uh, Ooh, Miss Matlanza is the one who gave us the children's story. May the church say amen. amen. And me, your MC, is Ooh, Kosi Machola. May you guys say amen. amen. Now, um, the person's going to be breaking the bread of life comes all the way from Orlando South Church, is Ooh, Brother Melusi, Skosana. But before he stands, I ask you to please give him a resounding amen. One that shows you that the church is very eager for this bread. Amen. amen. And before he does that, does, no, sorry, before he does that, rather, <laughs> we are going to get a special item from Harmonial Quartet. Yes. One, two, one, two. Happy Sabbath once again, church. Amen. Amen. Let me take this opportunity to also introduce the group. So it's Harmonium Quartet. And on first tenor, we have Mfundo. Uh, the last names probably we just get later. I'm Prosper. And this is FIFO. And that's same on bass. That's Baraton. Yes. Uh, so we are Harmonium Quartet. We love the Lord. We are a group of young individuals who love to spread the gospel through music. Yes. Um, another thing I love about, the church, but about this church, by the way, is those retractable kneeling benches there. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, whoever thought of that is powerful. That's a powerful person. <laughs> now we can endure long prayers and stuff. So <laughs> thank you so much. So the next song we're going to do speaks of a question. It's just a question we need to be asking ourselves when it comes. Is my heart ready? Be blessed. As I see the day approaching, day when Christ will come again, here's a question I keep asking of myself and of all men. When he comes, when he comes, when he comes, when he comes, will I be ready when he comes? Have I banished all my sin? Do I have his peace with him? Am I ready for signs are clearly showing that the Lord will soon return. Oh, I pray these words I'm asking in your quiet heart will burn. When he comes, when when he comes, when he comes, will you be ready when he comes? Have you 
Um, I greet everyone in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I look at the time and I'm realizing I'm left with 15 minutes. Uh, but I just said I, I should try never to go beyond, which I believe in that we live in a world where we eat everything. So our ability to concentrate is very poor. I've been here, I think, from nine, some of you. Some of us got around 10, some around 11. So those, for the sake of those that came early, we will depart very early. I won't, I'm not a long preacher. I, I, I try to minimize it as much as I can. I had a lot of things, but the program again was very powerful. I love the story of the kids and their interactions with their teacher. With their teacher. Um, we're going to go to our Bible, all of us, and open Acts chapter. Another thing that will make me finish earlier. Because there was a story of the kids, I was going to share a story as well. So I couldn't share my own story with the kids, just to encourage them. Some of you have been sent for to come here. Some, some had um, messages of, some got a Bible study. For me, it was a contrary, or it was a contrary event. For me to win this gospel, I was never an Adventist, but as young as these kids, there was a mother, a doctor's lady who lived next to my area, who would always pass with a, with, a, with a dish of food. And I would ask my mom, who once invited me and my younger brother to the to the church, and it was a children's day. The food we ate that day was amazing. And the next Sabbath I asked, did she pass? My mother said yes. Even on days where she was not at church, my mother would just say, yes, she did pass, and she would make sure that she passed us. And I'm here because of lunch. So I won't keep you long. I won't keep you long because I'm a firm believer of the ministry of lunch. Acts chapter 20, we're going to read verse 7 to 12. And upon the, upon the first day, oh, let me wait for, for all of us to find. Okay. And upon the first day of the week, when the disciples came together to break bread, Paul reached unto them, or Paul preached unto them, ready to depart on the morrow, and continued his speech until midnight. Verse 8. And there were many lights in the upper chamber where they were gathered together. Verse 9. And there sat in a window a certain young man named Eutychus, being fallen unto a deep sleep. And as Paul was long preaching, he sank, or he sank down with, a, with sleep and fell down with the third, from the third loft, and was taken up dead. Verse 10, And Paul came down and fell on him and embraced him and said, Trouble not yourselves, for his life is in him. Verse 11, When he therefore was come up again and had broken bread and eaten and taken a long while, ever till break of day, so he, depart, or he departed, and they brought the young man alive and were not a little comforted. We'll close our eyes as we pray. Most kind, gracious, love, and heavenly Father, here are your children. Here we are to listen your, to your word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Just a few things. My theme says, revive us again. And within the chapter, I just want us to learn a few life principles that can help us to survive. In this case, or the background story, Paul is his third visit to the children of Troas. He has been visiting them. He started a church on the first visit. He went back to check on them on the second visit. At this time, there are disciples and believers who believe in the word. He was just going to check on them and reviving them. We are told on verse 7 that they were gathered on the third story on the upper room. There the Bible says, Paul spoke to them 
and continued speaking to them until the day break or broke. That means he spoke to them endlessly. The very same Paul who came to them before preaching the gospel came back again to preach the gospel to them. He had a lot to say because he had substance in him. Maybe just a few points to give you. It's just an introduction of what I'm going to talk about. The Bible says they met and they sat and they enjoyed the company of each other. Point number one. Let's make it desirable for us to worship together. We are not finding that there were many who were bored. They knew Paul, most of them. They know what Paul would have said. The message of Paul was one. Fear God and give him glory. The only person and the only master he was preaching about, it was Jesus. They knew what Paul was going to say. But because the environment of their worship and their fellowship together was conducive enough, they came all the time. There are people who are not coming here. Not because the church is, is poor. Not because the preachers are boring. But we have made the environment not conducive for them to come. The Bible says it, the upper room was full to capacity. To an extent, we found a young man sitting by the window, which we are going to address that later. So what am I saying to us? Our Christianity should make it conducive for us to be in the presence of God. The Bible said they were met on the first day of the week. Paul was there for about seven days. Whole week Paul was with them, preaching to them. The very same people who came on the Sabbath came again on Sunday, the first day of the week. I went through my research to confirm that the very same Sunday we believe in, that is the first day of the week, it was the true one. So they came. And as much as they were preoccupied with their own things, church was valuable to them more than their own things because church was conducive for them. Some of us we call for, I heard that yoga was cancelled. Is it yoga? What was cancelled for yesterday? Yes, aerobics. Aerobics were cancelled uh, for tomorrow. Uh, in, in some churches you organize these things and only three or four people come. It's not that they're not interested, but because our fellowship is not conducive for us to spend time together. Better I see you on the Sabbath and I leave you because we are too fake for each other. Another thing, we find that Paul spoke forever until a young man fell asleep and fell and died. Now, Paul, I'm not interested about the falling of the young man for now. I'm interested on in the substance Paul has or has. He preached to them on the first day he was there. Throughout the whole week, he's with them. Even on the last day, he's still speaking forever. Substance is valuable. Substance qualifies your speech. Some of us, we want to preach, but we don't have substance. Some of us want to stand here week in and week out, but we have not invested on any substance. Half of the problems in this church, or half of the problems in the Adventist church, is listening to people with no substance. You wonder why our business meetings take forever. It is the lack of substance. Substance qualifies your speech. It does not end there in the things in, in church things, but it gains and, and, it, and, it, and it gives it validates you even in your professional space. If you have substance, then you have better comments. Now the Bible says there was a young man by the name of Eutychus. And Eutychus, I went further to check. What does the name mean? It says, the one of fortune. Unfortunately, he got a misfortune when he was sitting on the, on the window. Your favor does not manipulate us. Your favor cannot 
manipulate your circumstances. Because you are highly favored of the real priesthood does not suggest that problems and troubles will never come to you. Many of us are angry at God because we've decided to be Adventists and we think that by virtue of then we don't qualify for certain difficult things. When we get here, we worship God five years, ten years, seven years, twenty years. None of us are employed or some of us are, are not employed. Yet we worship God. We get angry at God and leave God. Your favor, your Adventism, your real priesthoodness does not qualify you automatically for certain things. There is a process you must go through before you receive certain things. The young man's favor, the young man's name did not make him automatically immune to falling and dying. We are not immune to difficult circumstances. That is why I don't know why some of us, when people gossip about us and we get angry, who told you that you are immune? We can gossip about others, but we can't gossip about you. People will always talk, but it should not derail you from living your own life. Amen. What we find again, which is, my, which is my fourth point almost. Yes. I'll always check time. The Bible says the young man was found the young man was found sitting on the, on the window seal. We don't know whether he got there first or he got there last. But what we know is that he went to the window and sat there. It could be that. It could be that when he got to the, to the, to the congregation or when he got to the meeting place, it was so full, packed to capacity. There was no space conducive for him to sit anywhere. The only place you could sit is at the window. Some of us, some of, some of the people who have fallen out of the window of faith, it is not sometimes because of their actions. We never made a space conducive for them enough. The only place they could sit is by the window. And automatically, they ended up falling away. But for the sake of saving the saints, and of being good to the saints, because I need a proper plate, let me be on your side and say, the young man, maybe, he got there early. But because of his issues in life, because of his inconsistencies in life, a better place for him to sit was in, on the window. He had access on the inside and access on the outside. Some of us are here. We are, we are here. There's everything conducive for us to worship God. But for some reason, we choose to sit by the window so that we have access on the inside and access on the outside. Allow me to say then to you this morning, don't entertain open windows. You might fall. Half of us entertained sitting on open windows. Half of the friends we had in the church might have entertained open windows and where they are now. It is danger to sit on top of the window because you have access on the outside and access on the inside. What, is, what, what you see on the outside, sometimes you don't see in the inside. Then you want to be on the outside. That is why we come every Sabbath and say, when you sit down, church is boring because you have access on the things of the outside. Don't put yourself on spaces where you have access on the things outside. Maybe let me say the reason some of us choose to sit on the windows that make us fall out from faith. Some of us entertain things that are not necessary for us to entertain. In life, make wise choices and never sit on open windows. Another thing, church politics we have taken them to heart. And as a result, many of us have fallen out of the window of faith. Church politics have pulled us out instead of pulling us in. 
And the devil has played a crucial role in making it sure that where we stand, he does not want us to stand. The Bible continues to say, as the young man was sitting there, chilled, he felt drowsy and, and fell asleep and eventually fell off and died. When you die spiritually, it is not an instant thing. It is a process. You fall asleep before. You become uninterested on God's things. And eventually, your uninterestedness results into you in you deciding that, what's the point of going? You come in, a, in the four weeks we have, in the four weeks we have to come to church, you only come two. You decide one day, on the other month, you come three. The other month, you just finish without coming. And life become, becomes normal. When, when, when there are church activities, you are not available. It is a state of drowsiness. In that process, it is taking you even further down. Few years down the line, you realize yourself that you have left God. The things you speak, the things you say. That is why we have many who have woken up and say, there is no God. And some of them are challenging God day in and day out. It did not start there. They began in not being interested in the things of God. Then the Bible says, after the young man had fallen down. It's half past, half past 12 now. I had set the alarm. The Bible says, after the young man had fallen down, then, I love the narrative or how the Bible narrates this. It says, when the young man had fallen down from the third, third story, Paul did not instruct them to take him up. He went down to the young man. What were you when Adam and Eve decided to sin against God? Heaven did not bring them closer when they were dead on earth. Heaven took means and resources, valuable resources, which is Jesus Christ, and came down. Allow me, there's a song that says, he came down to our level. I don't know where you are, but where you are, God can come to your level. We, we worship a God that does not, when we want access to him, we don't have to fight and try to find him. He makes himself available. The, the Bible says, I have come on Luke chapter, is it Luke chapter 19, I think. I have come to seek and save those who are lost. And many of you can sit down there, look at the prodigal son, look at the, the, the lamb that was lost and say, okay, it's fine. They were lost far away. We are here in the house of God. Where were you? when the coin was lost within the corridors of the house. Many of us are here, Adventists by nature. Some of us are born, they said vestry, but some of us were born in Para. Some of us came here. Some of you, you know your Adventism when you were still young or when you were born, you were born here. But either way, you are not immune to failing in life. Then after you have failed, and some of us are still here, we are failing God. In our failure, we are in the midst of the saints. Remember the lost coin? It was lost within the corridors, within the pews, sitting down here. But the Bible says, I have come to seek and save those that are lost. You are lost there. We are lost here. I might be lost standing before you, but the very God that we worship, he is capable, true and just, to come and save me from my misery. And they took the young man up. The Bible says. Then Paul continues to preaching, continues preaching to them until the following day. And they departed. The Bible, I left it on verse 12, which was my main text. Then 
they took the young man and brought him up and they went with him and they were and they were and they were not a little comforted the king james says but the other version says and they were greatly rejoicing and comforted what am i saying to us this morning i love the scenario on that part on verse 12 the people who went to pick up the young men did not become political with the young men they could have asked him why why where we are in church you are watch, you are watching your own thing why what were you doing what were you thinking some of us or some of our people they have left the church some of them yearn to come back but the challenge is that they will be asked why why some of us want to serve god some of us the church knows us to be notorious there are people who know to be notorious some have even denied god but now they have come back to their senses and they want to do the right thing but now what hinders them from doing the right thing it is you and me with our wives i love the attitude of the saints in troas when the young man had fallen off the pews of the church they never asked why the bible says instead they embraced the young man how i wish that when sinners in the house of when those we think we are better than them decide to come and step up to our level let us never ask them why i've come this morning to say wherever you are i've realized and i'm speaking from experience after covid and many other things we are a church that is suffering from the effects of covid we can never run away those an old story but in terms of our worship worshiping god it killed us so much there is a greater revival that we still need there is many of our friends that we are supposed to go and fetch where they are god and is willing to use many of us that are here to revive our fellow brothers even us who are still here and have fallen off the grace of god he is willing and eager to revive us every day heaven will never rest until it wins all of us but if all of us don't make it it will never be the issue of heaven it has tried everything it could to save humanity he who came down to our level so that we may serve him in all in all our capacities may god bless you amen, amen. yo that was a very powerful church amen. one thing for sure is i'm not sitting next to the windows next time <laughs> Anyways, um in closing I'd ask us to sing him number 132 near the cross.
Sekbonga Jehovah is Lako Silzuil. Still be not much, my sweet is Sugan, much as a cooler. Amen. As the preachers will file out, we will sing the Lord's Prayer. But I'd like to take this opportunity to say it is good to be to have you, uh, the congregation online. We thank you for your presence and um, may the good Lord be continually praised. Um, so, if you are a person who loves music, mm. you'll be here at our past two. Yeah. If you are a person who loves, um, who can tell me what instrument is that? Mm -mm, I, I can't hear. Huh? <laughs> okay, you will learn more about that. If you, if you love the sound of that, he's going to bless us in the afternoon with that. If you love the vocal harmonies and, and, yes. and you know, uh, that we heard, mm. harmonium. Mm. Yeah. There's harmony there, you know. They are going to give us their harmonies in the afternoon. So I um, ask you that you be here in time. And um, thank you so much, my good sir, Joseph. It's, mm. We've come a long way with Joseph. He's, he's good in these things. Yeah. Hence, I'll be promoting the young ones in here to take those lessons. I'm going to be leading in that. So I'm going to call off you, call all of you, that we, we do that. Yeah. We cannot have one pianist in the church. Mm. So, young people, come to me. We club up and we do what we need to do. Amen. To, to make it conducive for the young people to be here. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Our Father who art in heaven. Two. Our Father who art in heaven. Hallowed be thy name. Thy
his word. No condemnation, joy to the brief, pulling the heartstrings, waiting for him. Always with him, always with him, from grace to glory. Constellations to worlds unknown. I'll be with Jesus ever his own. He dwells within me, fullness of love. Oh, blessed oneness, sweet heaven above, he gives a foretaste what it will be when in his beauty Jesus I'll see. Of lunch, yeah. It's just I tell him you're at lunch. Now you know the who effects of lunch. <laughs> <laughs> no, but Zalwan, I will not allow him to blame lunch. He's been doing this all morning. <laughs> all morning he's been doing this. So stop blaming lunch, sir. Maybe he started with lunch in the morning. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> mm. Yeah. <laughs> Second one for the day. Yeah. Mm. All right, thank you. Yeah. This one will be our last rendition for the day. We thank you so much for allowing us this opportunity to minister to you uh, through music. We are really grateful. We hope you are also blessed. Thank you. Out in the highways and byways of life, many are weary and weary and sad, carrying the sunlight where darkness sees right, making the sorrow sad or glad. May oh, make me a make me a sad. Make me a blessing out of my life. May Jesus shine. shine. Oh, make me a make me a blessing. given to you in your need. Love as thy master, thy master loves you. Be to the helpless a carer indeed unto your misery. 
So, gentlemen, yes. <laughs> yeah. Um, if you have a collaboration, it's strong. So, yeah, as you see them, they're falling out, and unfortunately, they, yeah, they, they have to rush to Pretoria and, and to some errands as well. Um, this is not the last time you see them here. They are my boys. I'm going to call them. I, I've got a way of bringing them back again. <laughs> <laughs> yes, so yes. Um, um, while U Sistandi and my seasoned musician here will come up here, um, U Upotluvia will give us a solo of which you will introduce afterwards the whatever you we're going to talk about, and you give us your solo. Happy Sabbath. How is the music day? Hey, it's glorious, eh? You know, even myself, as I'm about to sing, I'm very scared, but I know that I'm singing in front of my church. So, you know, you'll give me some grace, eh? <laughs> Amen. Yeah, but it was a blessing. So, my song is about the cross. You know, we must carry the cross like as Jesus has carried the cross. It's, it's not easy, it's difficult, but we must carry the cross. Mm-hmm. 
Si ne tine zelwe gum twalo um twalo wezono zami tatu namle zundilandele de vum si. Esicho Dinga Tini Ukungam Landeli Wafa Genga Yami Su Dini Kandi Kutwale Da chondi kata zekile Wandi niku yesu da utwala Nangona ndandi woyika Tatu namle zundila I was saying, I feel so naked here. There's a pulpit that needs to be standing here and covering me. Um, I greet you all in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Happy Sabbath, saints. Um, Welcome to everybody who decided to stay and come back in the afternoon. We thank you so much for coming and embracing us on our music day. I wanted to say a special thank you to the group that's gone already, but they they filled our hearts with such lovely notes, such lovely harmonies. It was a beautiful, beautiful Sabbath morning. Um, We are going to be having a discussion this afternoon. The
Um, it's a conversation on music. So I've saw you've seen. I'm sure you have seen the poster. We are going to be trying to address a few questions about it as the types of music that we have in the church and the things that come along with that situation. Um, we are going to have Ooh, Brother Melusi to come and join us. But before he comes here, he's supposed to sing a song. Or is he singing a song when he's in front? I'm not sure exactly what your direction was, Uncle Lennon. When is he supposed to sing the song? The way I want. Okay, please come to the front. Can you give him a resounding amen? Amen. amen. And then we also have Uncle Lennon joining us. You must also come and fill the stage. Amen. amen. Hello, Bubu. Right. Um, so, it's supposed to be a discussion. So, I'm assuming that each and every one of us here, we can also be able to interact with the people in the front. It's not just a conversation between the three of us, but it's a conversation within, sort of with everyone in the congregation. So, can I please just ask that if you do have a question, please just raise your hand and then we will attend to that. Ne? Please do not wait until the very end. Um, if you have something to say in between, can we please um, address this? Before we start with the singing, do you have a mic there? Okay, good. I would just like um, our guests to introduce themselves. Yes, we said, oh, Brother Melusi, but uh, Brother Melusi, say more about you <laughs> and where you come from, what your background is, um, to be able to have you as a guest in our show. <laughs> Happy Sabbath. Amen. Uh, I was glad when they asked me to come here. Amen. Um, I'm in the gladness mood that David was. My name is Malusi Godfrey Mboya and my the children God bless me with all three of them are seated right in the middle. Uh, so I'm not alone. Mangaliso is my first born. Uh, Lifa is my second born. And Linda is my last born, the daughter. We worship at Dinwiti Church in Germiston. And originally I was born and raised in Port Elizabeth. Um, I have been all over the place, but the longest of time, I have lived in Gauteng more than where I was born. May the name of the Lord be praised. Amen. Brother Melissa, before you go, just your expertise in music, in music background. Can you give us a brief on that? I, I am no expert in music. Um, I think what I have um, inherited was a gift that came from above Amen. through my grandmother who raised us. Uh, she taught me the first note in music. And she gave it all to me to then find myself in music and worship. So I pushed myself um, in all sorts of things, singing in groups, singing as a soloist, um, starting a choir, writing songs from scratch, arranging songs, getting all the inspiration from the Holy Spirit um, but most of all, I like congregational singing. If you were to ask me not to sing as a soloist or in a quartet, that will suit me because I sing best with every one of you. Amen. And I'm looking forward not only to the Kempton Church, Kempton Park Church, but that the Kempton Park Church can join me and the rest of the saints as we ascend the sky. And I don't know that number. John could not have the skills to, to count. 
He says it's a multitude. Now if a multitude sings, I don't know what you think of it. I, I really don't know. And it's worse that you guys seated there might not even have played a musical instrument in your lives. But you will have a harp. <laughs> You'll be playing a harp along with your singing. Um, so I do not under I do not underestimate the power of music that God has given unto us. I will tell you more about it as we converse together. Amen. Thank you, Uncle Lin. Yes. Um. For those that don't know me, but uh, it looks like everybody here knows me. My name is Lennon Gula Ndebele. So I. He said there's no, no expert in music, but according to me, or well, according to my standards, he is an expert because he's my teacher. He's our conductor in our choir and he teaches us notes and he knows the notes like nobody's business, according to me. So I'm, I'm no expert in music. <clears throat> I just, uh, music for me, it was sort of like self-taught, maybe because being turned this into and just following around people about about Kulayo and Nama, I will find myself in there. But I think part of it is um, this gift that we get from God, the gift of music. I got it through my mother because my mother used to sing in a choir. And um, it just so happened that um, in my family, my from my family, you know, uh, those who my siblings from, from, from my family, from my own parents. I'm the only one who sings. And others could sing, but I think they were lazy and they don't want to probably sing. So um, this gift of music, because I love it, I try and I aspire to make sure that I try and be best um, in it. And I'm still continuing to do that. Now, um, um, I... I then, um, um, because of l loving this music, or because of, at some stage, I was just singing, you know, in the shower when I was at school, the boarding school. And this other guy says, okay, you've got a good voice. And then I said, what? Because I used to listen to myself. And I, up to today, I hate my voice. I don't know what people... Here, honestly, I hate my voice and I hate when, I hate, I just hate it. For, I don't know, for some reason. But people say I've got, hey, yeah, no, i see you again, because, yeah, I, I always wondered, what is it that they hear from me? Because I, I really hate hearing myself. I, I don't sound good at all. But, you know, see again, so I then, then they asked me that we should we form a group and we sing at school. It was a non-Adventist school, a, a, a public school, and there was no church there. There was, you know. So then we started singing um, in assemblies at school, and it was a good thing. That that school almost became like a mission because we would every time when you go to assemble, they would ask us to sing. And I did not like one part. Not that I did not like. I didn't want to sing first tenor. But everybody else runs away from first tenor. I would find myself singing first tenor. So I specialize in first tenor. I'm a tenor, but I can sing all parts. But now everybody thinks I can't sing any other part but tenor or first tenor. So I, that's where um, I've been because a lot of people run away from first tenor. I don't know, because of dynamics. And uh, it's, it's a part that you cannot just approach, Jay. I don't know. But I'm no expert in that. So that's my background. Thank you, Uncle. Um... I just wanted to put a general question out there. Music is part of our daily lives, right? Everybody hears, sings music everywhere all the time. But where does music come from? Like, I don't know if you prepared for this question. It was just this question that came up right now in my mind. Where does music come from? Well, music comes from God. Like, like I said, uh, if, if we all go to our Bibles, um, in the book of James, chapter 1, um, 
let's all rush there. Um, I think I quoted a verse, but I would like to read it in your hearing. Um, James chapter 1, and I'm reading from verse 6, 16 and then 17. Do not be deceived, my beloved brethren. Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above and comes down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variation or shadow of turning. Um, music is a gift, and music comes from the source. The, the history that we know is that Lucifer was given this gift in abundance. It was not his, it was borrowed or lent to him. So it comes from the one who owns everything. If we, if we forget everything else, let us remember this one thing. Um, you are not born to sing. God imparts or provides that gift upon you. And some of us are born not to even sing, but learn it along the way. It is a gift. Um, coming from God. Now, a gift can, can be preserved in you. But a gift can also be snatched away from you. So is the gift. The person who gave it to you can claim it back um, if you do not use it. Uh, some of us have got the gift, but we do not use it. And when I say use it, I mean using it for his glory. Uh, we may use it at times, but for our own glory. A gift is a gift. It must, you must always praise the one who gave it to you. So music can make you want to, to quote what prophet Isaiah quotes. That is, I have the gift of music, so I will ascend to the highest throne. I will make myself like God. I will rise up to the mount on the north, and all the angels will come and worship me. I will. I will. And I will. And we've seen the I wills in musicians. We have established that music is part of our lives. Ne? It's part of our everyday lives. Here's something interesting that I would like us to just look at quickly before we carry on. If we open to Genesis chapter 1, verses 1 to 3, right? Um... It says there that in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. And after he created the heavens and the earth, or while he was creating the heavens and the earth, I'll just read it. It's, in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth, and the earth, was, the earth was without form, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. And then God said... Let there be light, and there was light. God did what? He said. He made a sound, right? He made a sound. Some of us uh, that have done physics, we know that sound is vibrations, right? It's sounds that make a sort of wave situation, right? But when God spoke, the vibrations that came out of his mouth were vibrations that created something. And the something that he created is what we have now, or even better than what we have now, the first world before the flood, right? Here's a scientist here. Um, before we get to the scientist, let's just 
talk about this one. Uh, part of your answer is to say that music comes from God. It is heavenly, right? Music is heavenly. And we can see that from uh, Zephaniah chapter 3, verse 17. If you can open to Zephaniah chapter 3, verse 17. Zephaniah chapter 3 verse 17 says, The Lord, thy God in the midst of thee is mighty. He will save, he will rejoice over thee with joy. He will rest in his love and he will joy over thee with what? With what? Singing. So God sings. I almost said boys and girls. But God... <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> God sings, ladies and gentlemen. All right. God sings in heaven. He sings. Right. And singing like voice, vibrations, they make sounds. And with voice, with the voice of God, He made a sound and it created a beautiful world that we live in. Right. With everything that we see, God created it with His voice. Now, here is a scientist who is uh, from Switzerland. He's a physician in natural sciences. His name is Dr. Hans Jenny. He photographed a uh, inorganic matter. He photographed some inorganic matter. So it would be your sands, your powders, your things that are not alive, right? Things that can move, though. And he played music next to that particular item of um, inorganic matter that he was doing. And according to him, he said he played good music, ne? depending on what he terms as good music. And it would create this beautiful geometric shape, almost like what you see a snowflake, not snow, the snowflake, one tiny snowflake, like the one that they would put, I think, is a star, they would call it the star that you put on the Christmas tree or something like that. But if you've seen the shape of that particular item, it's got intricate patterns, almost something similar to what's on the carpet here, but it's not a haphazard J something, anything like that. And that's just from playing our go, our sorry, our earthly music, J and J, right? And then he would also put it, he would also put what he called bad music, and he would put it next to it, and it created the most awful shapes, the most disorganized shapes that there could ever be. It's a pity I just don't have pictures, but you can Google this guy. It's there on Google. Dr. Hans Jenny, that's his name. Now, which made me think. He created it in that organic matter, and he, he so he, he played that thing. He, he, he did his experiment with the inorganic matter, but he also did it with liquid, with water. Now, how much of our bodies are water? How much percentage of our bodies is water? It's 70%, right? 70% of our body is made out of water. And if this man's experiment shows that if you play good music and it produces the most beautiful shapes that you can find, our bodies are made out of water. So would you not think that the same effect would work on us as well? Like the results of what you get from good music. Like we were exclaiming how beautiful the quartet was singing this morning. It made you feel nice vibes, right? It made you feel good and it made you feel warm and all hugs and bubbles inside, right? It made you feel good. But the opposite is also true. The opposite is also very true, right? So in our discussion today, we are going to figure out we are now here in church. We've got um, music that we play. It would be music that is termed Christian. Right. I would like to find out from our speakers uh, who now, from their experiences, I would assume that they would know a thing or two about music. <laughs> This is what types of music are they like? Um, are they different genres or tempos, styles that 
we are referring to when there's music, or rather when we say music, what are we referring to exactly? Uh, I have a follow-up question after that. We can maybe try the first one. What types of music are they, Aunt, Uncle Lennon? So we have um, many different types of music. Now, what we'll need to first understand is when we talk of music, are we talking of vocal sounds or are we talking of music as in music? <laughs> so music as two. Yeah. Vocal music and There's instrumental music. Instru instrumental or symbols that you see is music. Symbols like that you the, see. Yeah. The what tonic solfa, the, the do, re, mi, do, the, the golf Oh, uh, you mean the, the music written down on paper. Yes, oh, yeah. okay. Yes. yes. Okay, so there's music that's written on paper that is your staff notation and your tonic notations and all that. And then there's this vocal. vocal music. And then... And then there is music that... Um, the types of music... Yes. We can call it maybe, you say, secular or Christian. Okay. You know, those kind of things. But as yes, it's an alluded to earlier on, that music comes from God. Originally, it was created, music was created only to worship God, not any other person. Mm. So, but we, 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 we then, um, as human beings, came up with our own things, and, and now we, 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 we have music, which we might now say we've got hymns, then we've got songs. One might ask, what's the difference, a hymn and a song? But one is solely for, to, give, to give praise to the creator only. And the other one, we can't call it a hymn, a song. A song I can sing to my creator, to my God, but I can also sing it to my loved ones. You okay, see. Okay. So then, when you say music, what types of music? To me, a type of music would be one type of music that I can sing to my friend, I can sing to my, or it can be a worldly, secular music, and the other could be Christian music. So, Uncle, you're saying that, so I'm calling him Uncle Lennon because mm -hmm. he's Uncle Lennon to me. Ne? He's Brother Lennon <laughs> to everybody else, but he's Uncle Lennon to me, so I just say Uncle, Uncle all the time, okay? <laughs> so, Uncle, when you say that there is me, there's a hymn yes. and then there's a song. Mm -hmm. So you can only sing a hymn to God and then you sing a song to, to God as well. To God and as well yes, or and, and others. Man. So God takes both songs and hymns. What's the difference between hymns and songs? That's the difference. That the other one is solely for God. The other one, you, I can, Derek can sing it to you, a love song. <laughs> so it's a, so so you can call it a hymn when 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 Derek sings to you or you know, yes, yeah. When yeah when when, okay. when I sing to my mother to my family or what it's songs Understood. of appreciation, my Do relationship or whatever and you know yeah. But okay. when it comes to God, it's a different thing. So that's my understanding of music and and from what I've self-taught. <laughs> and my research. Can we but sing the same we... song to God and to no, so, so a song can be sung to God, but you can't sing the same lyrics or song that you're singing to and, and to God. But so I'm just giving you a difference to say there's a hymn, there's a song. So it, it people use it interchangeably, and you might not see the difference, but the difference is that one is solely for this person. And one is for this as well. No problem. Understood. Okay. Now, my follow-up question to... Wait, but then did you answer all the types of songs that they are? I mean, sorry, types of music that they are. Is it only just those two? Vocal and uh, or rather written down or instrumental? Is that the only types of songs that they are? I mean, sorry, types of music that they are? Um, the The... The question is very general. Uh -huh. um, so I was, as, I was asking in the sense of tempo and style, uh, genres, that's where I was coming from. Uh, music, music is vast. Okay. And if you, if you were to ask in the context of a church, the answer will be different. Yes, hence and my follow-up question would be, do we have the same genres when it comes to gospel music type of thing so 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 there is uh, what is generally accepted as traditional music 
which is the type of music that is um, laid back and it resembles what cultures are dominating at the time. Um, in, in, terms of, in terms of our church history, um, culturally, we come from a background where there were no musical instruments, where we were not exposed, our forefathers were not exposed to so much of uh, musical instruments. And so, and their belief system uh, that was generally accepted in the society was that when you start beating drums, you are beating them to the ancestors, you are beating them if you are a Sangoma, um, if you try a rhythm like that, it will be when you are playing music to the dead. And so when the light of the gospel came, our forefathers and our foremothers then believed that if you played such music to the glory of God, it's not acceptable. And hence the vocal type of music was used. And that type of music, only to sing without an accompaniment, was then accepted and it, and, and it creeped into the church to say, this is the type of music the church should be playing. Um, this is the type of worship the church should be following, singing a cappella. I'll make an example. Um, when, when King's messengers were singing, uh, Oh glory, if we ever needed the Lord before, sure do you need him now. Oh, oh, sure do need him now. Oh, glory, Lord, sure do need him. Now, that song used to appeal to my grandmother a lot. It, it, that style of singing appealed to many people that helped us grow up. Now, in 1986, I am doing hand washing and I am listening to Take Six. And my grandmother goes past. And Take Six takes the very same song to another level. If we ever needed the Lord before. Hey, my grandmother was so angry. She was very furious. She toppled that basin of water that I was busy with. What type of music are you listening to? Who are these devils who are singing here? I'm, and I'm enjoying this, this type of music. I'm enjoying it. And, and I don't blame her. It's the background that shaped her thinking. That, that very same song with the very same message, the very same lyrics, but the style was just different. And now into, in, in her, it was devilish. A very sacred song. If you needed the Lord before, sure you need him now. Not any, not any other time. And they did it in, in six parts, which, are, which was very much fascinating. Um, those six chords were intriguing. Different from the four chords that King's messengers used. They never went beyond the four chords as, as far as I know. And, and we now even go to, to seventh notes, to eleventh notes, to thirteenth notes, to ninth notes. I, I, I in my experience, um, I write mostly in seven chords. That, that fascinates me. To write in seven chords. I'm not a four chord person. I'm, I, God has given me a gift and I use it that way. So our style is different. Can I now go to scripture quickly? Can I go to scripture quickly? Then there's questions on the... I'm, I'm reading and I'm just listen to me. I'm reading two verses by Paul. Addressing two churches. 
about the styles of music. The very same, the very same afternoon that we are having, Paul had the same afternoon. In Colossia, the church in Colossia, um, I'm reading the Colossians book, 3 verse 16. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. What must dwell in you? How must it dwell? If it dwells shallow, there's going to be a problem. There will be a problem if you skim the word. If the word does not found foundation in you, there's going to be. It's bound that a problem will crop up. Why? Because there are people seated here with different wounds. So teach and admonish one another in all wisdom. While you have the word richly dwelling in you, start teaching and start admonishing, encouraging, motivating one another. But use wisdom in doing so. Now, wisdom does not get produced if the word is not dwelling richly. Wisdom will lack if the word does not dwell richly. How do we admonish and how do we um, teach one another? With gratitude in your heart, sing psalms, sing hymns, Sing spiritual songs to God. That will teach and admonish a person who has lost a child. Seated right here. That will teach and encourage and motivate a person who was expecting to give birth to a little baby and has lost that baby. Now, the types of music that we want to limit to the church are hymns. The Bible says it's going to be hymns, it's going to be psalms, and, it will go, it, and it's going to be spiritual songs. How many times in this church do we struggle to accept spiritual songs? As a style of worship. If I need to get spiritual songs, I need to visit stars. Stars. It's not going to happen here. Hey, the word of the Lord is not dwelling richly in you or in me who is saying that. I think as a second, Hey, balance yourself. Even if spiritual songs are your style, hymns are part of it. Then the last verse, Ephesians. Be filled with the Spirit. Be filled with what? As you sing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs amongst yourselves. Singing and making melody to the Lord in your hearts. Giving thanks to God the Father at all times and for everything in the name of our Lord Jesus. When he came to the, when he came to the church in Colossia, they were lacking the word. They were all in the spirit. And they were fine with spiritual songs. And you are saying, continue with the spiritual songs. When he came to the Ephesians church, they were lacking in the spirit. They were good in the word, but they were lacking in the spirit. Said, ah, fine, you are fine with the word. The word is dwelling richly. But you know what? Your singing misses the spirit. <laughs> Your singing misses the spirit. Your psalms miss, are missing. You need to be filled. Those guys I'm coming from, they are filled with the word richly. 
Nina, you need to be filled with the Spirit. Lalela You need to be filled with the Word and with the Spirit. Because when you worship Him, you worship Him in spirit and in truth. Those are the styles that I find in the Bible. Hymns, Psalms, and spiritual songs. Thank you for those three hymns, psalms, and spiritual songs, right? I, I think, Mina, my understanding of music is a little bit uh, small here. Because Uncle said hymns are songs that are directed to God, right? Is it the words that are directed to God or everything around it? So, Mauti, hymn, does it mean because we play the piano, we play the trumpet, there's drums, there's guitar, but the what, what, what do you mean exactly when you say the hymn is directed to God? So that I can now get to the rest of the question, because now I want to find out what is this hymn? What is this spiritual song? And Psalms, I can understand. I'm, I'm hoping that's what they're meaning. What is in the book of Psalms, what we were studying this last term. So please elaborate some more on the three. Because what Wabu Melusi is saying, it's bringing up other questions that I'm not so sure about, that I need to... to do you have a, a question, Sispil? Okay. Can, 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 can we ask Sispil's question first and then attend to mine, please? the same song in a different style than take six. And then when I ask my mother, I usually tell my younger sisters to say, I don't even know how to dance because when you grew up, we were not even supposed to, you know? We were supposed to be to a point that even if you hear maybe a gospel like Rebecca and you want to dance, yeah, you'll be reprimanded because we were taught to say, walk softly in the sanctuary. So the minute the whole the sanctuary we are knowing ever hectic, we, we get confused because we are not taught like that. We were taught our angels when they come in the presence of the Lord, they submit, they are quiet, they cover themselves. So when now a different teaching comes to say, in the place of the Lord, you can do as you can jump. The other day, this video of Conga was coming through, Pastor Mente was doing like this, and then Everybody was like, what is happening in the church of God? So are we saying gently, because remember, the devil is very subtle. He would bring secular things slowly, slowly into the church. I'm not saying we're dancing like that, it's devilish. But I was taught, for in the sanctuary, you walk softly. So are we saying now, as the time goes, and thing, new things are introduced to us, our kids buy this because we're never whole in this century. Not usually when things were very strict. Mm. So should we say no, we, 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 are, we are in the dark and then allow our kids to even, I saw this other group rapping in the church. They were, the lyrics were good, but they were rapping. So are we saying those are the things that we should allow in the church of God because now they're saying the same things that glorify God but in a different style? Those are my questions. Yeah, her questions are similar to my questions. I, I also need clarity, please. So, yeah, um, it's, a, it's, it's always a, a bit confusing and it can get controversial at the same time. But I think we have to know, first of all, that where did this come from? And then if we know where it came from, we will definitely know how to then go about it and handle it. Um, and obviously there will be deviations. And people would want to bring their own things to spice up whatever is there. Because we, we, as human beings, we would like to spice up things. Even where things are not supposed to be spiced, we just want to add spice to it. Because we want it to appeal to us in a whatever, different, in a, a certain way. But however, um, what you, your dilemma, the question that you wanted me to elaborate on is, is that... Um, you, you touched, you said him, then you touched instruments and all that. Yes, him, we, we sing hymns, adoration to God. 
instruments are an accompaniment. They are an accompaniment. Yes, they are, they are accompanying. You know, we're supposed to be singing hymns. These other instruments, they are accompany. We cannot, we may have, not have them, we may not, you know, but then we are even, even uh, uh, admonished or even told to be very careful when we use these instruments because they can actually bring other spirits or worship, you know. If it's done randomly and, and the hands says we need to be thoroughly trained. Not just training, but a thorough training. We should not have a pianist who does not know how to all just come in because they know the cause and just want to, you know, but this, you know. So we sing hymns to God and when you bring in the, the instruments, it's accompanying that and it has to be thoroughly and it has to be in harmony. As long, the moment it's, it's out of sync, it's, it's not in harmony, then something wrong has done. So we need to drop it. Okay. Um, I wanted to be noted here for a little bit. Ubud Malisi said that he writes chords in the seventh note. I wanted to ask my pianist, can you play us a chord that is in the fourth and a chord that is in the seventh? Maybe we can be able to hear the differences. Play them one by one. One, two, three, four. That's the fourth chord. Okay? Yes, four chord, yes. And the seventh. So there's so the difference is basically the number of notes that make up the chord. So there's four chords in the first one and seven chords in the second one. Okay. Then put them all together, the four and the seven. I don't know. Is that what he's saying? Okay. Plus the seven plus three. No, no, no. Yes. Oh, so it's just got the extra two at the top. Extra three. Right. Uncle Lennon is saying that <laughs> Uncle Lennon is saying that the hymns are the songs that we sing that are directed to God, right? And then the instruments are an accompaniment that uh, accompany the songs. And we have to be careful in the way we apply the instruments to the hymns, right? As I entered, I'm going to just give a little tiny testimony. As I entered into the Adventist church, uh, I come from uh, an evangelical church. We play drums, we play the whole stuff. We are, you know, we are Rebecca people, you know. That's where I come from. So, <laughs> so going up and down in church when the drum goes, you know, you are there, you are in the, and you are even called to be in the spirit in such situations, right? And then I come to the Adventist church, there's no instruments whatsoever. I'm like, yes, because there it was a bit tough for me as well at some point. But then when I come here and then we play, Go see and then there's that drama or the pianist at the end. The song is in the hymn. The song is in the hymn. Ne? But then they add that spice. <laughs> And then they add the spice. Do, 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 do. And then, then, Adventists would say, if, sister white, uti, okay, there's this thing that we used to say, I know she said it. I don't know where or where it was written. Maroksalaya, I know that she said it. <laughs> That's one of the things I'm going to say right now. If it, if it arouses your lower passions, meaning that if your hips and your bums start to move, there's something wrong with that song. All right? So, that was the thing, you know? Like, you start to move this part of your body, then there's something that's not right with the song that you are singing. And yet, we have our very own hymn that is sung in... That style, it confuses the senses. We 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 are not sure. 
what's, what's, what's going on in that situation? Do you have a take on that for us? <laughs> Please help us. So in that, um, and she's right by saying that. But now, the thing is, we, you know when you're doing something right or something wrong, you would know. You may, you may not want to admit to yourself that Lapa, I've, I've jumped the line. I know where I'm supposed to draw the line. Because most of the times when that happens, it, it will start nicely. And then it, it, you get it and another, yeah, in no time, it's a, it's a, it's a already. And then you told now there's some suggestive, because now in your mind, you saw a certain style of dance somewhere. Somewhere. It could be in the club, it could be anywhere. And then you want to bring it in here. Then already, say more shagel. So Yancy says we must be very careful in that. There's nothing wrong with movement, but there's something wrong with the type of movement that you are doing. Because it was bringing me to this one. Yeah, I got spiritual songs. I'm still stuck there. Spiritual songs. Do you want to answer me? <laughs> I'm still stuck there. Because he commented about Melusi about going to the different churches with expensive names. Uh, the type of worship that we see or that we are exposed to in the social media, because I see La Potim, see Bona, see Bona, Seba Postil. You know, there's churches that do, isn't or that make their lower bodies move. You know, they play the music the way they play it and it makes their lower bodies move. And we are a bit unsure of it. Sometimes they use these very songs that we have here in our hymnal and they change it just like what, we are, like what I was explaining right now. Sometimes they use other songs that are not in the hymnal per se, but they are songs that speak Christian words, if I can put it like that. There are songs that speak city ningala. So I'm going to comment and give to, to, to my brother here. So so um while we're thinking about that and, and yeah, looking into that too, let, let, let's also think about the psalmist in the Bible, who is David. How how did David approach you know the way he he, he gave praises and honor to God? David was a harper. He used to play a harp. David was a musician. He wrote music. He wrote, po he wrote poet, po poetry. And David sang and he danced. We need to then to understand what kind of a dance was that? And where was that dance? Yeah, because it does not happen anywhere and everywhere. Yeah, yes, and what happened immediately? What, was, what had happened when he had to do that? You know, those are the context of all these things. So whatever we do and whatever we, we try to think about is we have to think, what, what is the context around? What is the motive? What am I trying to portray to the next person? Because in being led to, you just want to see how best I can move, my best moves. It's, 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 it's already gone off and we, we, we no longer see um, or, or achieve what we want to achieve because mainly it's already bordering when you do that, it's bordering on the wrong things. Of the, there's because you find Gutige, there's no more reverence in there. There is no more. Everything is just lost. So let's think about. We think about David. Uh, no, that's the best I think um, 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 advice that or um, example that I can give. Guti. when he did that, how was his psalms? How was he singing? How how did he dance? Why was he dancing? Where was he dancing? What, did, did, did he come and dance here on the pulpit? Or did he dance outside of the temple? You know, what was that? Because a lot of people would say, yes, we'll need to dance because David danced, but you don't understand what was happening in there. And like the type of music that, are, well, the type of movements that I've actually alluded to. Um, I, I think confusion. Um, some of these things are confusing in the sense that when we grew up, we did not question things. If my grandmother says, walk softly in the sanctuary, 
I did not question which verse are you talking about. We, we are sitting here answering questions on, on stuff that we ourselves should have asked questions and got answers. Now let's go together in, in, in the book of Psalms chapter 100. And, and I'm going to read it. Some of the stuff is going to make one person uncomfortable. But this is scripture. The lack of, the lack of knowing scripture richly gets us into trouble. Because if we got the answers, had we asked the questions, we would not be in the situation now. Now when we go to the scriptures and it becomes new light, we are stuck in what we were taught without reference to the Bible. Who are you to tell me not to dance when the Bible says I must dance? If the scripture says, Praise the Lord with a dance. Are you qualified to then say, but my mother said we, we should not dance it. Yes, this is the, that was the light they had at the moment. And God tolerated it. But the more light you get, the more you know, the more you search the scriptures. Because at a given point in time, the Holy Spirit is going to reveal himself. One way or the other. We are so used to the worship that is quiet and solemn. Let me shock you. Let's read verse 1. 100. Make a joyful noise. Make noise and make it joyful. You come to a place of worship and there is noise and it's joyful and you are like, ha, huh? make a joyful noise. Don't change it. Don't change that verse. Make a joyful noise to who? To the Lord. Where it becomes a problem is when the noise is made to glorify another man. When the noise is made to glorify each other. When we start entertaining one another and it is not glory to God, then that's not a joyful noise. Who must make that joyful noise? All the earth. God calls, God has not come to a point where the whole world makes a joyful noise all at once. The only time that will happen is when the saints go marching in. Guys, let me shock you. It's not going to be quiet. It will not be silent. You are not going, <laughs> you, you are not going to hear your uncle calling your name rising from the grave because of that joyful noise as we are going. You are not going to hear one another. Because in the presence of the Lord, there is noise. You haven't heard me. And I'm going to take you to scripture. Worship the Lord with gladness. Not with seriousness. With Gladness. Worship the Lord with a celebratory heart, with gladness. That's how God, I don't care what you say. If God says he wants me to worship him with gladness, I will. After David danced before the Lord, was he punished? Did he fall off the window? Was he cursed? Did he get a plague? Was he called to a church board? 
Guys, I'm making you uncomfortable because I'm reading stuff that you don't read and talk about. But the Holy Spirit says, I must say it, for all of us to choose. But let me put it this way. Can I put it this way? Be patient with the children of God. Do not force them to these things. Read the word. Let them digest the word in their own time, at their own pace. They will come to terms. Where the word falls, it will germinate and grow. It is not for me, after saying this word to you, to then force you next Sabbath, how, why didn't you make a joyful... Uh -uh. It will take time to some of us. There is, I'm going to read it further. There is a, there is a, a scripture in the Bible that says, um, let, let us be tolerant to the weaker brother. So some people take that weaker brother like they are 30 years and 50 years in the church, but they are still weaker brothers. Now, when you resist, you are not a weaker brother. If you cannot compromise someone else's style and taste in the church, you are not a weak, you are not we you, you are not a weaker brother. You have taken a weakness, a weakness current. The weaker brother referred in the scripture is the person who is new and does not know. It says, consider that person. Don't be hard on that person because that person is still drinking milk. Where now who has been on solid food, you are not a weaker brother. We must learn to accommodate one another because the styles of worship are different. If hymns appeal to you, when you worship the Lord, hymns will always appeal to you. But accept, Uguti, the brethren who are amongst you will make psalms their preference. That's what would appeal to them. And the younger people, the spiritual songs will appeal to them just as much. And we should not condemn them. The Bible protects them from people like us who are ready to condemn them for liking that. Scripture. Come into his presence with singing. Nyaisaba the line that I have read. Sometimes we are outside of the presence of God waiting to judge one another how we, how we worship God. When you are in the presence of God, you don't even see who is worshipping and who is not worshipping. When I tell you, as I sit here, when I worship, I do not hear who was whispering to who. My heart and my brain, my mind is tuned to the throne right at that moment. If I were to advise you, if, only if I were to advise you as a church in Christ Jesus, take the announcements and put them before the song service or after the sermon. Take what? The announcements. Because the order of service can be changed at any. Take the, move from the congregational singing straight into the sermon. You have made, you have prepared the people for God to listen to his word. And then you stand here tell, telling us, so and so lost the other one. And this one, uh, we are already in the presence of God to listen to him speaking. And I like what uh, 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 the elder was saying. Before he spoke, he said, I'm sorry to disturb the worship. Because he was, he acknowledged it. That we were already in the spirit, 
in the presence of God. And all that was needed was God to speak. But we have ordered our service in such a way that some things, there's nothing wrong with it. But somehow the devil, the devil is happy when that worship mood is broken. When you are in the presence of God, you will know it. You will know it. I was reading this book by Ed Christian. He's the editor of, of the Adventist Journal Theologic, Theological Society. That somewhere in his chapters, he says, the reason we are not getting into the presence of God is because Tina selves, we are not united. We are not united. So we, our fellowship is a little bit of a suspect. It is fake fellowship here too. Ubani ukuluma na loyapela. How dare you call that person your brother or your sister? You don't even know Bajeni during the week. You did not even check them on a call. These days there's even WhatsApp. Hello, how are you, my sister, my brother? How are you? During the having forgotten to do all that during the week, you walk in here and you sit in your pew. And then you expect this magic of getting into the presence of the Lord with the saints. And there's no unity. And God decides not to come down because his people are not united. To come and do what? He says, I dwell in the praises of the people who are united. And that's where Let me read it and then keep quiet because I come into his presence. Know that the Lord is God. We are not singing for ourselves here. We are singing by knowing that he is God. So the, 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 that, that line is the definition of worship. We always say worship. We worship God because of who he is and we praise him for what he has done. So we praise him, acknowledging what he has done. But when we worship him, we worship him for who he is. Having done, having done this or not done it. We've asked him to do something and he has not done it. We worship him because he is God. He will do it or he will decide not to, but he remains God to be worshipped. We will delay our praise until he has done it. But worshiping, we'll go ahead and worship him. Amen. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, in the spirit of worship, can you please lead us into the presence of God with your special item? While he's preparing, he has a quote that I would just like to read in reference to Psalm 100 verses 1 and 2. People at the back will just let me know when you guys are ready. Oh, are they ready? Let's close our eyes. We need wisdom, we need power, and true love for each other. We have heard so many big but empty words. 
And so we come before your face Asking for your grace Bring your people to a state of kingdom life Restore your church again Touch your people once again With the precious holy end We pray let the kingdom shine upon this earth Through a living glorious church Not for temporary deeds But to restore authority and power let the mighty rushing wind blow in. Touch your people once again. Lord, you see your tired servants and the broken wounded soldiers. Oh, how much we need the precious healing hand. We need the power of the cross as the only source for us as we stand up facing final battle cry. Restore your church again. Touch your people once again with your precious holy end we pray let your kingdom shine upon this earth through a living glorious church not for temporary But to restore authority and power Let the mighty rushing wind blow in Touch your people once again Let the mighty rushing wind As we continue in our worship service, Brother Mangesi, can you please bless us with another item? Oh, Prince. Sorry, Brother Prince. <laughs> Sorry, my mistake. but making sure we stay within salvation and what God wants us to do. So,
Now when the saints go marching in, yeah, when the saints go marching by, yes, I want to be in that number. Oh, when the saints go marching in, now when the saints go marching in, well, when the saints go marching by, yes, I want to be in that number. Oh, when the saints go marching. saints go marching in yes when the saints go marching in yes I want to be in the number oh when the saints go marching in now when the saints when the saints go marching in Go marching in, oh, when the saints go marching by. Yes, I want to be in the number. Oh, when the saints go marching in, Papa, the people you do the world, the way one day we'll be marching with those saints. Are you ready to meet him in the sky? Amen. Um, saints, um, I had asked um, him to, also, to, to, to give us, I think it was his last um, piece. He needed to leave early. I hold him back. I, I held him back <laughs> until this time. So, um, we'd like to appreciate um, um, your presence here. Thank you, Lord. Uh, thank you. When, when, when we made a call to come to us and you made yourself available, um, we, we really appreciate and we'll, I think we will have more time again with you in the future um, as we, 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 we have this relationship now um, with you. And to my pianist, um, Joseph, thank you so much. And Joseph will be a more familiar face here because I would want him to come and train our young people here. Yes, so we will work around that. Um, it does not come at free, but we can always work around these things, you know. And, you know, he, he, he's, my, he's my good friend from, from young when he was, <laughs> yes, from the neighborhood. So thank you very much, um, Joseph, and appreciate um, No Mama at that side to accompany um, my good friend, and thank you for um, fellowship together, fellowshipping with us um, this Sabbath. Um, you are then free, you can be relieved if you want to leave. We'll just continue for the next few minutes and we'll close, um, I think, just um, around five with our program. Thank you. I have a second question. It says, since we are addressing a 
types of music, ne? or what music, what the role of music is in our lives. Uh, elaborate for us how it can be utilized as part of our personal or family devotion, uh, and what role does 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 music play in that in that regard? So, for me to answer that, I would want probably, yeah, my answer will come in a way that we need, we, we need to um, understand first what um, probably the type of music that probably I would, for me, to use it as a tool for witnessing or for fellowship and, and for congregational and even personal um, um, you know, witnessing and the evangelism is that, first of all, I need to understand that for this type of, for, for this to appeal to the congregation or even to the people who would visit here, what type of music should I put, should I, you know, uh, uh, um, perform or, you know. So there is, for me, what I call um, cantillation. This is where a type of music or, 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 or a part where when a Bible verse is being read and a song is being sung at the same time, <clears throat> a hymn. So when you read a Bible verse, which actually in, is in sync with what is being read, it would, I think, resonate with somebody in a certain way that it will actually uplift their spirit. It would appeal to them in a different way or interpret or understand a certain script, that scripture in a different way that would help their spiritual life. Hence, from there, it is easy for them to, when they are out there, they can easily share with somebody and witness because you can only speak of what you know and what you understand and what you believe in. You can, you can only give what you have. You can't give what you don't have. So that that, that, that type of music that would actually enable then one person to go out there. Then there's another one that is called um, um, Antiphony. And so, 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 so this one is, is um, the Antiphonal is when, is actually mostly has a, is in parallel, parallelism, this English sometimes, or is, is a, a tongue twister. So it is um, performed, it can be done separately, but at the same time where a congregation or a choir does that alternating with a soloist or, you know, um, that kind of a thing. So hence, hence I say it parallelism, you know, one, there can be a soloist, there can be. So somebody can actually um, be drawn to what the part of a soloist is singing, which actually uh, gels or which comes together with what the choir is singing. And that kind of an experience. When they're out there I'm saying, but that was the way it was done. And it, it will keep on probably ringing in their head and they'll be singing and, you know, and, and it helps them there in, out there in, in, in the life. And we have, you know, I was talking about the, whole, the, the, the hymn songs. So within the service that, is, 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 that we do, that is, 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 is performed, is also where uh, we have uh, uh, um, also even a soloist in there. Then the, we have the orchestration. We talk of orchestra. Orchestra, you can only have orchestra when you have 12 or more instruments. That's why we talk of orchestra. Different, different types. For me, orchestra appeals to me. It does in a way that, yeah, um, more than any, uh, any other thing. You know, when you, when you, when you hear um, a cielo, when you hear a violin, uh, the violet, all these instruments coming together, it actually then, you know, uh, brings uh, um, some kind of edification, especially to me, to other people, it might um, um, appear in that. So you'll have 12, 12 or more, maybe up to 36, but less than that, it cannot be. So it, it will not, it will defeat the whole purpose. But at the same time, you can't have, you, what, some people would want to include things like the trumpet and the drum and whatever, but 
the trumpet would not form part of the orchestra. You might include it if you want to, and if an expert, if you know how it's going to gel. You know, for me, it, it tends to be off. And obviously, you, you can't have a drum at the same time in that, but you can. Others would want, but not every time. Because a drum normally is on more on the a gong, not a drum, like probably. We can call it a gong. It's in, in the theater kind of a thing or whatever. So, you know. so that those instruments alone, for me, they do the magic. And, 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 and you can bring up a subject or you can, you know, I can be gladly talk about it without fear, without, you know, and, and I can witness to somebody based on that. So those kind of things and those kind of music, those types, and, and for me, it equips me to do, then go and witness. And when I'm at home with my family, okay, we sing, you know, hymns. Normally we sing hymns when we're at home. We hardly want to do all these kind of things. But those, those the hymns that appeal, something that appeals to me when I'm sharing at home, that's my time of, you know, uh, uh, personal devotion and with my family as well. So we need to each and every time sing songs, sing hymns to prepare us for the word of God. Because nothing, for me, I don't know, probably somebody can actually say, state here that for me, nothing prepares me for the word of God than music. It prepares my heart. And when it's sung and I'm soothed and I'm, you know, for me there, the Holy Spirit is really pouring down on me. Then when somebody speaks about the love of God and preaches to me, then I get it. I don't know about others, but that's just how it is for me. I repeat your question. What role, what other, how can we utilize music as part of our personal and family devotion? And what role does it play? Uh... I'm I'm just going to go into the SDA philosophy of music um as was <clears throat> as was voted in 1972 um some of you were not around uh the topic says music at home music education and appreciation should begin early in the life of a child at home, children need to be exposed to music at an early stage. That's the role it plays. When is the early stage of a child? Before the child is born. <laughs> That's the early stage. They, they kick. <laughs> Obviously, they will kick when they hear music. I, I, I remember... Um, I remember Ulifa. Um, he he used to kick when a song is is played, and uh, there was something about chiefs that you know you start singing and then you call chiefs chiefs like the team chiefs of soccer. He used to kick, and he used to kick hard. He used to. Uh, could see him. Um, so, so music has got a role. The introduction to great hymns must be introduced to children at an early stage. The gospel songs in the informal happy experience of family worship, they must be brought in. Family singing and participation in family music, instrumental ensembles, should be encouraged. I sit here and I want to I want to leave this church knowing oh, there will be two or three instrumentalists that are born out of this church after I have left. God is not happy that you are not training your children to play instruments. Not for the church. But you play those instruments for your family worship. That worship that happens at the family setting comes to church and edifies the church. But it's done where? At home. 
So it means we are not doing enough to our children. We, in fact, in, in the words of, of, of my sister, we are perpetrating the very same a cappella that our grandparents gave to us. Even though we know, even Sister White says, let us not object to musical instruments in the, in the place of worship. Danam, you should be playing a violin. You should be playing a cello. You should be playing a viola. The orchestra in the, in the service of God. We're going to go, if I get allowed, we're going to go into the book of Chronicles and you will see the orchestra that he's talking about was part of the worship every Sabbath. Orchestra. And it was noisy because what he is not preferring, trumpets. They were playing trumpets. This time at church, they were playing 120 trumpets. You don't know how noisy that blast is. And then you've got cymbals. You know those? Yo, that thing is noisy. They had those things. They, in church, I'm not talking about stuff that did not happen. Tina, we have not picked up the skill of our forefathers back in historical, patriarchal times. We have not. We have actually, we, we, we argue at a very level that needs us to quicken ourselves and, and move up. If we get to that point, you will get the pinnacle of this presentation. So we need to do that at home. Instruments are not, you don't put your instrument uh, in the shelves and then come and want to play here at church. And so this is my brother, Lennon. When you go to his WhatsApp profile, he's got a photo of me and him. So, for instance, Yena na le pianist na no prince. They did not practice with the praise team. I was seated there at the corner. He goes, he starts the key. He is still busy paging when he is about to, when he is supposed to be starting a song. Then says me la basilinde. Because there was no practice before. There was no rehearsal before. It's very important, these things. Um, I, in my church, when I get into being a music director, and all, we rehearse on Wednesday and on Thursday, preparing for Sabbath. You are not coming here and have choices. We do the choices in the rehearsal. And we pre they, we've chosen them. We've prepared for them and we've prayed upon them. There will come a time for choices when it is time for testimony. What was the song that lifted you up in the, during the week? Tina, we choose songs because they are nice to sing. And I miss that song. Making no resemblance to, to no experience during the week. Because one, you did not visit the sick. So you did not see the power of God raising the sick. Family worship is very important. You, music in that family is what will win your neighbor to Christ. When we were seven, when we were six, seven, my grandmother Yes, like you should see the scores of children running. Who five? 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 And children were assembling there by our house for prayer. And what was important was the choruses. Because my grandmother used to sing. She would start the chorus. And when we get in, then she goes to bass because she used to sing bass. She would start the chorus and then as children, as we were singing, a lot of people joined the church. 
a lot of parents of those children came to church because of the music in the family. See, now we, my grandmother never used to cook for us. She actually cooked for the village, for the, for the community, because at five, must get to Ugland, Uktandaza, then it's eating time. She has smeared bread, peanut butter, and all that for all the children, and the oros is there after prayer. And that's what brought people to church. That's what was a winning soul technique. Nangum Shumaile Bella Pumelus. Who we know? Lunch. So, so, but it was music that was calling them. Family worship. Very important. Very important. You don't have to sing. You, you don't have to be a good singer. You just have to sing to the Lord. Beguno Utobili Amaz. Welcome to Bilimfa. That's my home boy. Uh, we are we were two or three streets away from each other. Um <laughs> we we grew up Sikuliswang one of the elders, but in that while he's late. That man could not sing, but he was an evangelist. Utatu Waile, when, when he starts a song, you must all be in the mood. Because uh, church worship and evangelist, evangelistical worship is different. Waile Ngo Meiwan is a winner. Souls. Ati so hambatina. If you tell so hambatina, ukretil, uishabeli Ngo Mayaki. Sizaungena immediately. If I singena, haimboya waile ngangena. So ambatina, singen again. So ambatina, si ezulini so salawe na funujizo no so ambatina, si ezulini wo salawe na funujizo no. Amen, hallelujah. Amen, hallelujah. Amen, hallelujah. Wo na ungena ko wo geyena. Masaka Shabel, Ungena go, ho. Amen, Hallel, ho, Sears. Amen, ho, Sears. That was his music. That's how he used to sing. The last example. We had a very brave music song leader. He didn't know how to sing. Well, we think he didn't, but God knew he knew. He knew one note. He knew one note. Yeah, it's like a sort of. No, we are as the. Was who saw Kupel? Torem Biva Solatido. Totila so. Umalapa who saw. Tanding Gome. We are Isabella. When peace like a river attended my way, when sorrows like sea billows roll, whatever my Lord thou hast taught me to say, it is well, it is well with my soul. It is well. <laughs> That's all he knew. He would lead songs in his, in his home like that. And he would lead them at church. Don't sit at your talent. We are not here to judge one another. Kunom dalawala. Udula. Um, this and hey, hey, Nina, <laughs> two vocally wounded. Utula sings in tongues. That's what I call, used to tell him. You sing in tongues when I shake and Yamazo shake. He will call it when I you sing in tongues. We started a church at UCT, and I'm thinking, okay, 
what is this man singing? <laughs> he used to sit next to me at church. What is he singing? I never knew his part, but he was singing. He was singing. And in that process, Then there were two. It was not only him. He was And they were sing, they were singing in tongues. <laughs> I learned to have an ear of worshiping with them next. They were comfortable to sing and they would go. I would go and I would encourage them and they would sing because I'm not listening to them. I'm praising the Lord. They are praising the same Lord. And he's listening to all of us. He knows how we are pouring. It doesn't matter how this vocal comes out. What, is, what matters is... All right, we have three questions now. Then we'll have Mr. Matanza and then Mr. Mangwela. Okay, greetings, church. It's still a happy Sabbath for you, blessed one. Um, I also just thought I'd share um, a personal experience with music in my life, um, especially that links with um, the verse that you read to us, um, Sister Andy, in Zephaniah chapter 3, verse 17. So just the last part, it says, He will joy over thee with singing. So there's, a, there's a, a, a perspective that I once, that I heard concerning this verse, because um, from verse uh, 8, so it just talks about deliverance. So as God is delivering, reconciling, healing, restoring, you know, all those good things that link with Ubaba's Mboya's song also. So this perspective on this verse is that um, when God is busy doing the work of deliverance in our lives, for example, um, say at night, you know, we are sleeping and you slept with a broken heart or something just was not right, you were wounded. And then as God is ministering, you know, to us, even in our sleep as he's healing the broken wounds and just oiling here and there, bandaging here and there, he's doing that singing, you know, and with the angels, with his entire host of angels singing. And we are deep in sleep at that time. And what does he leave us with? He leaves us with a, heart, uh, with a song in our hearts. So when we wake up and you've got this song in your heart, then we know that this is the song that God was singing as he was just ministering to me only in a way that he could. So recently I've actually learned to, to, to know these songs, you know, um, especially today there's a song that was just here, deep inside. And I just sat down. I had never heard this song before. It was um, in the hymn book. And when I said, I, I, I could hymn, I could hum it, but I just didn't know the words. And I didn't even know if I have to start to Google, where do I start? And I just prayed and said, God, you will bring this song, even with the lyrics to me. You know, and I just sat and I was like, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I even recorded myself, you know, because then I started searching. I couldn't let it go. I started searching. I was like, okay, let me just record the hum in, in case when I move on, you know, I forget it. So I recorded it. I was like, okay, when I'm busy searching for it, I'll come back to that actual, um, the, the, the humming of it. It came. And it was song number 31. You know, and I, it, it could only have come um, through the Holy Spirit. The words, they came as they were. Like, you know, and, and at first, I, did, I think I, it was about, after about 30 minutes of just myself, just humming them, I was like, God, what is this song? It is here in my heart, and I know that I was deep in my sleep, and it's just a song that was in my heart. So, so I'm, I've just learned that experience of God just singing as he ministered to us. Sometimes even when we are awake, but my personal experience is, is, is lately, it really has been also at night. And... Um, I'm, and, and um, Uncle, let me not call Uncle Lennon, Brother Lennon, 
You know, you, you gave us such a wonderful lecture in the morning um, about the songs in the Bible. You know, and it, it just triggered something in me to say, you know, especially that verse that was read earlier, Genesis chapter 1, uh, verse 1 to 3, to think what kind of a song must have been sung at that moment, you know, when the Holy Spirit was hovering over, you know, um, if you know, because, I mean, you, 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 you live, breathe music, you know. So if you've had a revelation, do let us know, you know, about the songs that you discover in the Bible. I'm particularly interested in that song, you know, that was being sung as the Holy Spirit was just preparing to do this great work that we get to, to live in and experience right now. And just, um, so that was a question. And then just my third point to um, touching Sis um, Bueller's um, uh, question, yeah, is that um, I'm, I'm also just, just trained, it's hard, but I'm just training myself to not sing or to not even hum or move to a song that, where I don't know the lyrics. Like, I don't know what is being said, but I'm already moving. I don't know what is being said, but I'm humming. Even the songs in the church here, you know, why I do, when I don't understand what is being said, maybe like it's a song that's sung in Kosa, and I don't know that word. It's a training that I'm just doing. I know that it's, you know, a, a song that I would probably agree with, but just not to hum until I know what is being said. Sister Tandy was talking about God said. So if you don't know what is being said, what are we moving to? What are we harming to? So, because I, I sometimes ask my, my kids, and they would be dancing to songs. I was like, hmm, what are they saying? And they don't know. And I'm thinking, and you are already just, you know, doing the things there, but you don't even know what they are saying. Because um, just a case in point, an example, I, there's a recent video that I was just seeing flooding in, in the, the YouTube space, in, in, in what I follow in YouTube. And it's a song that really just intrigued me to go find out what are they actually saying? Because the way that they were dancing, it was really just puzzling to me because I was hearing imimoya, imimoya, and waya pumoyongwele. And then when I actually followed the whole lyrics, you know, the, 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 the lyrical offering of the song, it was connecting with Ephesians chapter 5, verse, uh, no, Ephesians chapter 6, uh, this, uh, what is this? I just want to read it to show you the danger of actually moving to things that we don't even know. So it talks about, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. So this song is actually saying that. It says, So the singer is even going to the lengths of saying, and the vibe, it, it doesn't match what the song is saying. The vibe is like we are celebrating, but the song says there are spirits here. Where is the Holy Spirit? There are spirits here, but the people are singing and they're celebrating and they're so happy. And there is such a sad mismatch. So it, it's just important that we train ourselves to move to what is being said more first before we move to the beat. Thanks. Amen. It's important that we know the difference between the music and the song, like the words of the song and the beat of the music. Uh, if you are in a privileged area to learn about the different songs, here's a quick example. If you close your eyes and you are watching a movie, the kind of music that you hear when you are watching a children's movie, there's no words, they don't speak, they don't say anything. Ne? It's just the music that will be playing. So it, it will be an orchestra, it will be something that's playing in the background. And you are seeing the picture, but if you close your eyes, or say Kishimi for that matter, we are Pega, or something like that. And then there's, maybe you're watching a movie, let me say for instance, and then you hear the sounds, tee, 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 that gives you what kind of feeling? Suspense, right? I didn't say anything. All I said was just the sound that I made. It gives you a sound of suspense, right? And then if you hear, ding, 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 that's a joyful sound. You know, it will be like a children's song. And then you're, what's that? It's romantic, romantic kind of music. 
Music doesn't necessarily have to be the words that you are saying. It comes from the instruments that are being played, the type of feeling that is evoked by the instruments that are being played. And the musicians out there know this thing. It's not just a haphazard chance situation. They know exactly what it is that they're trying to put into that music, into that movie, into that song, into that whatever that you're going to be listening to that has got the music with it. So it is up to us to make sure that we guard what? The avenues of our minds. It gives feeling. We feel something when there's music. Whatever feeling that you are feeling, it's a feeling. They are evoking a sort of feeling. The doom, doom. Doom, doom, go see, cool. But still, what is happening first? Doom, doom. What's moving? Doom, doom, doom. Think about such things. Yes. Um, thanks, thank, thank you. Thank you to the panel for, for those insights. Um, perhaps a couple of questions. Um, we, we've spoken about music, where it came from, and you know, maybe we've gone as far as Christian music. But we've got this thing we call Adventist music. There is a term like that. Adventist music. And my question is, what is Adventist music? And what is not Adventist music? Um, so that's the first part of that. Um, and, and, and you'll find, um, in, 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 we are a movement, by the way, right? And as the church is moving, if at all we are moving, um, there are sentiments that um, are, are, are in the church about... Um, for example, how are we conducting mission? How our mission should be contextualized? We are a global church, but we're not homogenous throughout the global church. And recently, there was a Facebook post in the Adventist community that was decrying that throughout the whole church, we've got one hymn book, right? And you find, I think there's this book that speaks about the origin of those hymns. I mean, it's fantastic hymns. But there was a post, I think from an Adventist pastor, be crying that in the diversity of the church, we've got one hymn book. That is not reflective of the diversity in the church. You, I mean, you are a composer. I remember in the last general conference, as the conferences were giving their reports, I think there's a conference in the division, in the, you know, Eastern Europe, they've got a project of writing their own hymns for that part of the world that speaks to their context in that part of the world. And, and I see in this part of the world, that kind of idea is frowned upon, especially if you talk about you know, uh, contextualizing our music in our cultural context. We haven't even moved to how we are using music for mission. I'll give an example. Um, uh, Brother Mashud was here the other time. He does you know, evangelism quite a lot. And he recognized that you know, he can use music that, you know, the, 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 our target, uh, 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 you know, the people that we're targeting for mission, they're familiar with. He would get groups who sang that kind of music to, to get the people in, you know, because obviously we, we've got Adventist music, we stick to that, and when people come, they cannot identify with that. We, we, I think some sentiments have been made there about how we are unable to, 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 to adapt our music to the situation. If we move out, and, and, and what I, I, I am lamenting is we have now made synonymous. Adventist music for us is, defines Christian music. If you're outside Adventist music, you've moved out of, of, of Christian music. So maybe you know, so your comments on that, on how we can contextualize our music, perhaps have hymns that talk about our own stories, because stories here in this part of the world that can become hymns, especially if, if we've got composers sitting right before us. We'll take that noted, ne? Uh, Brother Mangwele. Good afternoon, Saints. Um, and thanks to the panel. Um, thank you, Brother uh, Mboya. Um, by the way, he's also my teacher. Um, so we sang together in another choir. Um, I think he's done a great job in terms of teaching me when it comes to music. And thanks for that. Um, I think my, my comment is in and around, I think the topic that has to do with um, noise, uh, drums or instruments, 
or, or music, you know, all of them combined. Um, I thought I think I thought you would sort of emphasize um, on the the issue of um, I think um, harmony, um, the issue of order in terms of uh, I think all all those. Um, I think you spoke earlier on that you know when you are a music director you would normally I mean have the team that you sort of serve with you know to be available I think about two times in a week so that you sort of prepare. Um, I'm actually bringing this up because, you know, sometimes the devil has an ability to sort of come in uh, in a situation like that, where we think that we are actually being led by the Spirit of God, but to only find out that, you know, it's not the Spirit of God that's actually leading. Um, the book of First Corinthians uh, fourteen forty, it says, um, "Can somebody read it for us?" Right, fine. Let, let, let me read it. It says, let all things be done decently and in order. I think the same type of worship that we think that we are giving to God, it must be done in an orderly manner. Um, one of the comments that Ellen White makes when it comes to that, the very same topic um, she actually says that we need to guard to maintain close connection with Christ that we be not deceived by Satan's devices. The Lord desires to have in his service order and discipline, not excitement and confusion. I mean, those are likely to sort of uh, come in um, and then the other thing that she touches on, which I thought, you know, it's, it's very moving. So she says, the Lord has shown me, uh, the Lord has shown me, would, uh, the Lord has shown me, would that take place just before the close of probation? Every uncouth thing will be demonstrated. They will be shouting with drums, music, and dancing. The senses of Rational beings will become so confused that they cannot be trusted to make right decisions. And this is called the moving of the Holy Spirit. This is the last part that I want to read. And then she says, the Holy Spirit never reveals itself in such a method, in such a bedlam of noise. This is an invention of Satan to cover up his ingenious methods of making of none effect the pure, sincere, elevating and uh, ennobling, sanctifying truth uh, for, for this time. So I think the, the, the point that I wanted to make is in and around asking God to give us minds that are discerning for us to be able to separate um, what we would call a worship that is acceptable towards God and a worship that is not acceptable. I mean, we've seen that a lot of times where worship would think it's really moving. We think that the spirit of God in there. But what the devil does is that he uses that as well. So I think that we need to also be careful that when we actually go through such worship, we actually make a distinction that is this acceptable to God? Is this, is this something that God is pleased with or not? Thank you. To... Okay, thank you. Um, in terms of Usis um, Andile, we, we, we actually take note, we noted um, um, your, like a warning, or that whatever we, fi we find ourselves dancing to or, or harming to, we should first understand what is it that we are just moving to, because we just, you know, um, finding ourselves allowing ourselves, opening ourselves to spirits that would actually rule us afterwards, then we, we think we are in the, in the presence of God and yet we've already gone out of there. So that was a very good one. And, and my elder, um, Matlanza, the, the question that you asked about Adventist music, <laughs> there's no such thing as Adventist music. We have actually taken, we have 
came out, we came out with this term, term saying Adventist music because these hymns that we sing there were not composed by Adventists. So we can't claim that it's Adventist music. Remember, Adventism, Adventists came and, you know, around the 1844, 45, and the church was organized about 1950, I think it was 53 or so, somewhere there. Before then, there was no Adventist. We had a Methodist, we had the Lutheran, we had all these other traditional churches of which most of the music written is coming from them. Labes Babi Zote Wisil, it was um, the Charles Wessel, is it uh, Charles, young Charles? Yes. Yeah, it was said. The, the Lutheran, you know, um, those who are following Martin Luther and the Lutherans, and you know. So the music that we sing here is not Adventist music. Let's not lie to ourselves and say this is Adventist music. We are yet to compose our own music. We've, we've just wanted to claim, and well, probably, is, is it a good claim? I don't know, but yeah, <laughs> this is not Adventist. There's no, I've never heard of an Ad Adventist music. And then um, um, in, 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 in terms of, um, uh, what was the other, uh, other comment or question? can't remember the, the, the other one. Or it was just maybe just a comment to say for the composers, you know, uh, maybe we need to look into in, 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 into what music or whatever we are writing and claiming um, as Adventists. So um, I think that's what I just needed to share. I'll give it to, to my brother. But looking at the time, um, I'm not too sure if you still have got more questions on there. Probably one last and then we can give it to him to then summarize everything, sum up everything and we do it together as Vespa because our time um, has gone. Okay. Um, I just have one comment as well. I can comment. Ne? <laughs> right. Um, just to comment on Psalms 100. That make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before him in praise and with singing. Um, what Brother Manguela is saying that everything needs to be done in order ne? and in reverence. I agree with that part. Um, but then to address this part of this joyful noise situation, right? Ellen White says that music forms part of our, this is in Patriarchs and Prophets, page 594. It says music forms a part of our, so the music forms a part of God's worship in the courts above. And we should endeavor in our songs of praise to approach as nearly as possible to the harmony of the heavenly choirs. So in our endeavor to try and sing, we should try very much to approach it to what the heavenly hosts are doing it like. Yes, we're supposed to shout in praise. Yes, we're supposed to sing in worship to God. But we're supposed to do it to as close as to what the angels are doing it like in heaven. And then he says, she continues to say, the proper training of voice in an, is an important feature in education and should not be neglected. Singing as a part of a religious service is as much an act of worship as is prayer. The heart must feel the spirit of the song and give it right expression. What I take out from this quote is that it should be close to what the angels are doing it like. The angels. Okay, so in my understanding of what angels are like, I don't see angels running around worshiping God, running recklessly in the church or in heaven for that matter. Right? I don't know if they've got pelvises that they can move, but I don't see them doing that either. Even with the trombones and the trumpets and all of that. The music is loud, yes. The shouting is there, yes. But everything is in order. It's dignified. In its loudness, it is dignified. I, I like choir music. Choir music is very powerful. Choir music has got, who was displaying music notes there. They've got uh, your fortes and your pianos and your dynamics, your music dynamics. You have loud sessions, you have soft sessions. They build character to the thing. But it's all what? In order. It's not just shouting about going around whichever way that you feel like going and doing exactly anything, any and everything that you feel like doing just because you are saying you are 
praising. Be it to a man, be it to God, because you might think that, because the man in front will say, let's give glory to God. Let's all shout praise to God. You are doing it to God, but what you're doing, then you're rolling around on the floor and you're doing all sorts of things. Is that what the angels are doing? I mean, just, I'm not sure. I've never been to a heaven, eh, guys, but think, just eh, apply your knowledge. In the, do angels fall over on the floor and rumble themselves around like that? Do, I mean, the other one that was rolling around on TikTok was a pastor. He was in a, a ceilingless place. There's no ceiling, but guna makapa. And the man is jumping up on the things and he's swinging like a monkey. Guys, let, you know, I mean, like some logic has to be applied to this as well. I mean, think about what it is. Yes, we will apply all the things. Sing, make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence in singing. Yes, but then you don't take just one verse. You mix it with another one and another one. And Giri scripture interprets scripture within our church. And we know that we need to apply everything that we have heard together and make sense of one thing. So that's just my, 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 my comment on that one. My very last question. <laughs> so we can use music as a witnessing tool, right? I think I'm just going to shoot myself in the foot here with this one, but I'm going to ask it anyway. We use our music as a witnessing tool. Ne? Um, how far can we take it? I just want to know, just to be on the fence here. In the olden days, maybe maybe not here in South Africa per se, but Dalak Dala, so they would use like circular artists to call the congregants or the people around the community. Because, say for instance, Beyonce can sing a gospel song. And then a certain famous preacher invites Beyonce to their tent. In quotes. And then Beyonce sings this song, a holy, holy, Lord God Almighty. But it's Beyonce singing the song. So the people come to the congregation place to come and hear the word of God. What place does it have here in, 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 in our church or in our setting? For instance, we can invite our <laughs> Imimoya, Imimoya people. Eh? They have a famous song. Everybody likes it. Everybody likes their name. And then they are all called Bu Seba Tulela Paya Baya Tula again. Ayandan Danzi type of people. Brendan Praise. <laughs> Why are you asking this question? <laughs> Um, the, the church manual um, which I have here um, we, we need to familiarize ourselves with music how it is addressed in the church manual we need to familiarize ourselves with the SDA philosophy of music past and present we need to familiarize ourselves with music its role qualities and influence by Ellen G. White we need to and we need to take our hymn book church hymnal and read in front before we even open a hymn and understand how it was constructed. We need to. To answer your question, the church manual says, even amongst the members of the church, before you can even invite um, outsiders, musicians should be selected carefully. Amongst us, we need to exercise care in selecting those who vowed and went down to be baptized. Because they are also suspect. They can mess it up. I don't know if it answers you then with non-baptized members. Then one of the chapters says, let's not fool ourselves inviting people who, because this hymn book has got the section for 
doctrinal, doctrinal hymns, hymns that speak to our doctrine. Now I had my brother and my brother asking the uh, Adventist music. We we don't have Adventist music. Um, we we are called to sacred music, and we are given guidelines on how to select sacred music. These are the guidelines. They get revised all the time. We are waiting for the next revision. This was carefully done. Some of the Methodist, Baptist, uh, Wesleyan, Lutheran hymns that are in here, they have been tweaked. If you take the same Catholic hymn and check the very same hymn here, the lyrics are not the same. Uh, one of the hymns that you like singing. What is the last verse saying? We had to change that verse because it's not speaking to our doctrine. It becomes Adventist because of that flavor. Because it is no way, you won't find it any way, the way we sing it, the lyrics that we have added. So, um, let us not fool ourselves. We have not mastered the ministry of music to subject ourselves to to artists who do not subscribe to our Advent, Adventist philosophy of music. We still need to panel beat that philosophy amongst us. We have not found ourselves in togetherness. What you said is very key and I'm going to summarize it in a maybe in a pricking painful way. Um, I find, this is my personal experience, I find, I don't know, I don't know much. We don't get Im enough information. But even here, I don't see our division being represented. I, I don't, I try to pick names in the, in the contributors of this hymnal. What I pick up is African-American who are now allowed to, to add some Negro spirituals. Till now we have not been incorporated into this one. But because in the spirit of our church and in the spirit of us going to heaven as a family, we cannot fight to break the church apart because of that. There will come a time when our voice will be heard and our contribution will be valued and this hymnal will be thicker than it is because we are not the only ones who are having that big cry the Asians are crying the same cry that we are crying because they are not here. Their style of music is so way different than ours. Amongst our hymn books ourselves, the hymn book, the, 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 U Christo Shabele Le Nupela Gu 300. Hello? U Christo Ngome Nupela Gu 351. Where's your 51 songs? They are not there because they are written in Kosa and no one has taken the liberty to translate them into Zulu and into Sutu and then take the Sutu ones that are not in the Kosa hymnal. And also, if Choko Yahao is part of it, when are we adding it to the... 
There comes a time. Let's not rush. Let's, we need to be patient about it. Why I'm saying it's pricking and painful? Even the lesson is like that. There is no contribution from us. Sometimes when I read the lesson, I'm saying, I am missing a lot of what the contribution of Africa is to this conference, to this general conference of the SDA. I'm saying this with all humility, that should we be given a chance, we need to contribute our own experiences. I don't know when last I heard a mission report talking about South Africa or Zimbabwe or in the SADC. It's talking about Lebanon. It is talking to us about India. It is talking to us about South America. Where are we? That's why I'm saying it's a... We, we've accepted my brother to adopt hymns because they say the hymns that we have bring a foreign culture. Hey, what is the fullness of this hymn book is somebody else's culture, eh? These guys, when they left Baptist, Methodist, and all that, they did not leave their behaviors behind. They even took their hymns with them into the Advent. That's why we see them here. We could, they, they missed the point of saying, let's start a new hymn book, man. Let's leave the, the Baptist hymns behind. Let's start a new, fresh hymn book with Adventist songs that are never sung anyway. Had they started like that, we would not be discussing this question. And those are the facts of the matter. We cannot run away, but Jesus help us not to retaliate or even protest against it. We, we have been victims of, even in religion we are, even in our faith we are victims. We swallow and absorb a lot of things. I'll tell you from my experience, the reason, <coughs> the reason this is such a contentious issue, the dance and, 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 and the chorus is that because it talks to our own culture. And because our culture is not acceptable in the Western uh, setup, Nati, we feel, Uguti, hey, hi, man, it's unholy. It is not. Mina, God created me the way that I am. He made me to be a black African human being who has his own inclinations. I know how to sing classical music. Awake the harp, the lie awake. No, I know. But I also know Lisa Lee. He's sitting gala. Akotikongo. Siyanyaniso. I know. It will not make sense to a European. Won't. But it's got a message that says, fulfill your promise, O Lord. Why? So, so I'll answer your question in a vague way. If those outside non-Adventists full of the Holy Spirit people are brought by God to teach us something. Who are we to resist? Because it's not here. This is not the final. This is not the finale. This is not the last of it all. The committee is still busy. There are many committees that are busy um, designing music for us. 
but it has to go through a lot of protocol. Pass through until it reaches. Everyone prays. Even when it gets presented, you still need to pray that they vote for it because they might not. Having done all that work, then it's a question of an area that I don't like talking about, which is politics at the highest level. And those are things we don't want to talk about because we preserve this church. It must not break. It has broken so many times. If now music becomes a contributor to another breakaway, hi, Basalona, we, we don't know what we want. We still need souls coming in here. So we will hang ten and absorb and swallow until our time comes. Maybe we will be in our graves. It will be their children. We don't know. Um, so, I'm not too sure what, what you have right now, but what we, we, we he, was actually, he was actually wrapping up um, as in form of, of Vespa, but I think we need to call our children to, when we pray, we pray together with them. And I think while he's doing that, I'm tempted to say, you can give us a closing solo. While he's preparing that, Sister Tandy, you've got your, 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 last, your last words. So, whilst one of our deacons is calling the children outside, uh, remember the first quotation I made or the citation I made about Dr. Hans Jenny? Ne? Dr. Hans Jenny, as I said in the first place, he photographed those uh, inorganic matter situations, right? We said that if you listen to good music, you will create, or he, it created a good shape, right? But definitely the opposite is true because he did create, so he did do a test on the same uh, inorganic matter, but he played the bad music to it and it created a very ugly looking kind of shape, right? Now, we, we know that the, uh, Satan was a chief musician in heaven, right? He was a chief musician in heaven and he made a resolve in his heart. I'm going to read a quotation here from Patriarchs and Prophets. It says, obviously, um, just backstory, we know what happened with him and the angels and the fighting and the whatnots ne, and the rebellion and the things that happened. It says that in, in Patriarchs and Prophets, page 52, it says, no longer free to stir up rebellion in heaven. Satan's enmity against God found a new field in plotting the ruin of the human race. So he took his anger towards the people that God had created. It says, in the happiness and the peace of the holy pair in Eden, he beheld a vision of the bliss that to him was forever lost. Moved by envy, he determined to incite them to disobedience and bring upon them the guilt and penalty of sin. He would change their love to distrust and their song of praise against their master. Thus, he would not only purge these innocents being into the same misery which he was himself enduring, but would cast dishonor upon God and cause grief in heaven. Guys, music goes a long way. It goes a long way. It's not just about the petty arguments that we have here in the front. It goes a long way. It's heavenly. The battle as to which genre of music you should listen to or which songs you should listen to and which ones you shouldn't listen to is deep. It is deep because, guys, the devil resolved in his heart. That is his mission in life. He resolved in his heart to turn the song of praise 
against God. That's a big deal. We know he wants to take us to hell, but guys, he's, that's his mission. He's resolved it. That's, that's it. That's, that's what he wants to do. That is his goal in life. Singoba and Itina, who I've just been around for a mere 50, 60 years. He's been around for millennia. He's been around for millennia, this guy. He's, he's mastered his craft. He has mastered his craft. What he, how do you know something is a lie? You just take the truth and just put one tiny little sentence or even a comma to change it from being a truth to becoming a lie. He deceived Eve in the garden. Did he? Did he surely say you will die? He put what? Doubt in her. He didn't say, ah, no, he didn't say that. No, that's wrong. He used a little bit of truth and he put a little spice nyana. Right. What is music, guys? The thing that he was in charge of, that was his deal. He was the boss, he was the top dog of music in heaven. I mean, we would call it that, yes, but you understand? He was the master. He, was the, he knows what he's talking about. He knows what he's doing. He knows just what kind of instruments would bring glory to God and which ones would bring dishonor to God. He knows exactly which beat. Remember the music about suspense and love and all of that? He knows exactly what to put in and what not to put in. The number of chords. All of that stuff. He knows exactly what to do. My advice? Let us guard the avenues of our minds. Amen. Amen. As he pray, uh, watch Michael, as he sings, he will also say a prayer to close for us.
ishona ilanga nezinsuku ziphela minango ivuma ingoma ngiphuje So yeah, um, what can we say? The only thing we can say is, please give me Jesus. You can take all and give me Jesus. I'm here to say thank you to my sister, my partner in crime in music. <laughs> um, uh, thank you so much um, for the effort you've put, and thank you so much for availing yourself, and thank you so much for allowing yourself for God to use you through music. My brother, we come a long way. We know each other from, yeah, in Kadzaktal. We, we come from Gubobotswana, wherever, together, yeah, and, you know, crossing borders. And, and he's a very good, passionate person that he teaches music so well that you can understand even the person who thinks they don't, they won't understand or they, know music, they won't know music you will make it very simple for you to understand. I'm a testimony of that, and I'm speaking here. And so is Mpo, like you said. I know Mpo. Yes, I started with you. I know Mpo from, from Katle Hong. If I want to expose, Mpo could not sing, but through this man. Now he's a very seasoned bass. He, he can mesmerize you with his face. So, <laughs> so, no, thank you so much. I would thank the Lord for, 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 for what he's afforded us and what he has given us this time to be here to fellowship together with one another in music. And as we go along and learn more and understand, as we go and read more what the, the, what, what the philosophy of um, um, Adventists um, in, in music and the church manual and what um, Sister White uh, um, tells us or warns us or teaches us or makes us see in her writings of how we should conduct ourselves. Uh, we should take time and invest in that because we're going to get lost with this kind of music. We will lose heaven because we think we are doing it the right way. We think we know, and yet we don't. Let us invest and let us read and understand this so that when we stand here and sing and present whatever we present to the children of God, we are leading them to the right direction. We are leading them to God. Otherwise, we, we will be Sabbath in, Sabbath out. When we stand here and as worship team and leaders and we sing, we could be leading the church astray in how we do things. And that will be called upon us. Their blood will be called upon us. And and everybody else because of our singing and because of what we bring here and because of what we think we, it should be done. And yet we don't go back to what needs to be done. And we take up exactly the instruction, not our own instruction, not our own things and not our own ways but what the Spirit 
says, the Spirit of the Lord says to us. At this point in time, um, Oh, okay. My leader there is actually making me, okay, not making me. It's something that we, we, it has been in the plan. So, um, it's not starting, but it's reviving the Kempton Park Central Church Choir and the Youth Choir and the Children's Choir. Um, so, it will come, you would hear it, you, would have, you need to avail yourself and you need to commit to that. We need to commit. We need to put time to it. Whatever. If you know, you had the harmonies. You had the good music. You don't just get there three, two minutes. Uh, come together, sit down, and say no. It takes commitment. It takes time. It takes the love of it. So we need to put ourselves in there, not for ourselves, but for the, you know, for the glory of God, and you know, the salvation of our fellow men. We shall stand now as we pray to close this um, service and then thereafter we can disperse. Shall we bow our heads as we pray? Mercifully, kind and loving Father in heaven, we come before thy throne this time, Lord. Nothing we bring before you but sinful as we are. We like to say thank you for being a good God to us. Thank you for tolerating us Thank you for being faithful to us, though we're not faithful to you. Now, this time, Lord, we have had fellowship with our brothers and sisters. And now, as we're going to start a new week, we ask that you continue to be with us. We ask the Holy Spirit to guide our paths, to be with us in everything that we do. Be it in singing, fellowshipping with our families and our friends. We ask that you be there and guide us through. As we are going to disperse this evening, Lord, may we, um, your Holy Spirit be with us for each and every individual represented here and the families. May blessings be poured upon each and every person in this place. This is my humble prayer. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Thank you so much. We are dismissed. <laughs> Uh, I'm sorry, he's my friend. Thank you, um, Kempton Park Central Church, for inviting my family. I also would like to acknowledge <coughs> my music director. Uh, Dinwiddie Church has sent the music director to, to come and worship with us in the afternoon. Mrs. Uh, Muitwa, will you rise? That's, my <coughs> That's our music director, Dinwiddie, the one seated here. She is married to the husband, Kenny Muitwa. And um, so I'm, I'm grateful the church has sent them to, to witness that I did not go to another church. <laughs> Amen. Thank you.